did it yesterday. I'm getting back on it, like the uh, the, the reading finally again. Like it takes a minute for like, because uh, w- once once we go home for break, usually like once winter really kicks in, I'm always out of it. Like I don't want to do shit. Oh really? Uh, and it takes like a little bit, like into February before I'm like, okay, getting back on the grind. And I really think after the snowstorm that happened, what uh, I was able to go on the porch again. Mm-hmm. And that kind of re- tricked me into like, okay, I always read on the porch every single morning last year. Mm-hmm. So now we're back into it. And then like when I'm, and I'm trying to squeeze in the, the Spanish too, but I keep fucking up because it's been a minute. <laughs> keep losing those hearts quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like, I, I did it yesterday, and, but not as much. I'm trying to go into Sapphire League. I've been like in the Ruby League for a minute. So I'm like, man, I need to get into Sapphire. I've like, been in, I was in Sapphire for a while, and now I'm back into like gold or something. Yeah, it's like, it, it really depends on the group that you're in, and if people are wondering, talk about Duolingo. Um, like, when I first got to the Ruby League, and you know, all the people that I had in that group were like heavy hitters. So like all of them were just like knocking it out. Like you're looking like 1,400 experience. Yeah. I'm like... Dude, I just saw Blaylock be hitting like 50 days in a row or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for a uh, d- d- uh, Danish. Danish. Is that the, is that how they're, mm-hmm. is that the language called? Yeah. Danish? Okay, cool. Yeah, I saw that Shouts too. to Blaylock. Shouts. Shouts. Where you been, baby? <laughs> I kind of miss my bet. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a minute. I think, um, I think I just either hit 30 or I just might have just hit 41 or whatever. Mm, um, yeah. So I think I'm literally getting back to where I was before because I, th- I kind of just gave up. I'm like, after a while, I'm like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck this owl. <laughs> I'm just like, seriously, I, I got to that point. But like you had said, like maybe change the level. And it's been a little bit more challenging. And I got to a point where like, man, I'm like, man, this shit ain't working. And then I was doing it. And then it was a word I hadn't seen in a minute. I'm just like, wait. And I just like, and I'm like, I got it. I'm just like, oh, I guess it's working. Keep going. Yeah. But I looked into it, um, and it seems like they do have Arabic on Duolingo. Ooh. So like, and I don't know if you remember, I'd mentioned like that was like one of my last languages that I wanted to learn. Yeah. So why do you want to learn that one? I always Is thought that just because you're from Africa. No, well that, but I also feel like you know it, it's a beautiful language. I never, really, I never really thought about it until like I call her my sister. Um, her name's Alex. She's like one of my sister's best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, so she would always come to the house and hang out. But like we basically, I don't say grew up together, but we spent a lot of time together to where like she can be called sis. But like she was cool. talking about like, you know, how, you know, Arabic is like such a beautiful language. And even even the way that they sing, you know, a lot of time is like, I love it. So I just, it's just an, honestly, just out of the love of the how sonically it sounds, mm-hmm. you know, especially with music. But I also feel like there's a little bit of misunderstanding, you know, like with, you know, those type of people and, I mean, and the race and the language and all. So, yeah, that's kind of, there really isn't any other motivation other than it's a cool language. I want to be able to sing in Arabic. Yeah. That sort of thing. I wonder if the misunder- misunderstanding probably just comes from the, just, the time difference it seems like like when you go there it's almost going back in time in certain places mm, i don't know i feel like the misunderstanding comes at least especially you know in western world and it doesn't really help but um a lot of those movies you know who's the bad guys you know or yeah. they're speaking arabic and if it's not them it's the russian you know, or they speak russian you know so like as much as we don't like to we don't really point to those but that doesn't really help you know that specific you know population because mm-hmm. you know if you're in a plane you see an arabic guy you're just like okay is he or is he not you know because we've seen all those movies where with those scenes where the one arabic dude comes on the plane and he ends up being a terrorist you yeah know? so it's like that shit don't help but of course you know with 9 11 that didn't help either yeah. you know and i think that affected the view you know mostly on western world and in Europe, not so much, but here, I would say definitely. You see someone wearing a hijab or whatever that seems like he's Muslim already, like those things go through your mind. And I personally did not, I, I never really liked that because I told you, like, a lot of my friends were Muslims and, you know, some of the most faithful people that I know. And whether it's just a matter of just 
doing it out of repetition, but as long as it keeps you in the house of God, you know, why yeah. does it matter? You know, I feel like a lot of time, you know, Catholic people can be quite repetitive as well. You know, when you're going to church, it's the same thing every time, the same motion. Yeah, it's quite boring. You know, you know what I mean? Like, Me and Doe are raised Catholic. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you go to church, it's just like, okay, you got to get on your knees here. Okay, I, it's like, a, it's like a, it's easy to kind of just get into that routine mm -hmm. and to kind of just go adrift and thinking that there is a, a genuine connection, but... You're just doing stuff that you know how to do, you know, where's the genuine aspect of it? I even mentioned that to my parents when I was young. I'm just like, so do y'all guys think that Catholic is like, I guess a good, I don't I don't want to say a good religion, but like, like where's the faith? You know what it's I mean? It's kind of like a subgenre of yeah. Christianity where you just feel a little more guilty. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, like, that's always been a thing, but and I, I've considered, you know, like the Muslim faith at one point, you mm -hmm. know, but like not necessarily like because of, you know, what we know, like, you know, there's 17 wives or whatever, but like, I don't know. It's just like the, the culture around it because like, you know, going, praying, when you're praying, you're always praying, I think, facing the Mecca, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and then, uh, at one point, every, it's everyone's, I don't want to say dream or goal, but those are the two words that come to mind is that either everyone's dreams or goal to go to the actual Mecca and pray. Um, I forgot the word in French, but like it was, a, there was always a, a period of time where like some people would travel to the big, big mosque mm -hmm. and, all. um, and then go there. I don't want to say pilgrimage because that's definitely not the word. <laughs> I don't think so. But it was the big thing. That was like that was it for them. You know, mm -hmm. like you would go there and you would pray in the, you know, in the location where everybody and all the other faithful Muslims would go. And I don't know. It's just always been interesting. I even asked Courtney Mr. Like, so would you still date me if I was Muslim? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just to see. You know, which I don't. It's quite fascinating. It's like yeah. is as long as it's not oppressing like exactly. women or gay people or, or any of that shit i don't really know the dylan actually has the quran to kind of to just to read it to learn it just yeah. to see why you know they think that way mm -hmm. um but yeah like i like you and me always talked about it's a more individualism when it comes to that shit where like i, I don't i don't see it as like the entire muslim faith is yeah terrorist it's you you're a cunt <laughs> you know like it's you individually yeah you know as long as, long as you're just doing your thing like it's yeah. whatever man it's just i think it's just we don't understand it over here because like it you're seems not... like we're two thousand years in the future compared to like how they're living over there yeah. and granted like you can go to the e, what is it eau mm -hmm. uae the emirate united emirate yeah empire whatever it is mm -hmm. like they're like in the year 3000 right now or some yeah, shit over yeah. there yeah, but like their their faith is still very similar where like the women have to wear you know the hijabs or whatever they're, they're called yeah the cover their face where yeah. it's just that type of stuff i'm not really into yeah i mean like uh, to, to every, i feel like to every culture there's always an aspect that you know if you obviously bring it back to us to back to home it's like mm, not really sure but you know like that's that, that's the beauty of it, you know, just traveling throughout all these different places. There's a lot of things you're not going to understand. Yeah. doesn't mean you got to automatically, you know, deem them bad or wrong. You just got to take them for what it is. And if they're still misunderstanding after you were explained shit, then you just accept the difference and, mm -hmm. you know, just learn to accept that that is what it is. A lot of times, I think a lot of times uh, people have a hard time with Americans because when we go to different countries, we... Are very much so. Oh yeah, well, this is what we do in America. Like we bring America there, which you know, in a sense, that's never going to change. You know, mm -hmm. that's who we are. But like in wanting to influence those cultures so much, we think that because that's how we act home, we can bring that liberty and freedom over there, and not realizing that. I don't want to say your liberty and freedom ends when you leave the door, but especially if you're in a different country. Well, it's different in different countries. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's why I don't, like, I, I don't really have a desire to go to any Middle Eastern countries. I don't want, like, if my wife, future wife comes with me, she's not going to act differently. She's mm -hmm. not going to wear that shit. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Personally. Mm -hmm. But I understand that's that world over there. Y'all do your thing. But exactly, you know. though. So you're going over there, but then you're not. No, going. I'm not going over there. Oh, okay. I'm okay. saying I'm not going over but there. But if you did go over there, would you, like, try to, like, fall into, like, whatever the rule is there? Or would you just be. I would tr try to follow the, the, the laws of that country. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't go to a country where it is that vastly different, where if I just step out of line once, I go to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where if we go to Europe, we're pretty chill. Except if you go to Russia. Russia, I hear, is, is still 
like, I mean, better than the middle. I mean, compared, I don't know how you compare the two, but like, it's just different. I haven't been to Russia though, so I've been to it, Europe. It's very different. I mean, I'll, I've been to um, where the fuck? What, what's it called? Um, where you have the the Dead Sea? What is it? I don't know where that is. I know what you're Israel. talking about Israel. Yeah, yeah. So I've been to Israel. Israel. I would like to check out at some point, dude. Israel was not what I had in mind. Really? At all? What was it like? Um, hot. Um, very multicultural, and people were very actually nice. Really? Yeah, at least like where we where we were in Tel Aviv. Did you see their big ass wall? No, I went to I went where um, we actually went to freaking Tel Aviv, um, and also went by the the Dead Sea. We went there, and then the main city. I wish I was paying a lot more attention to. I was just so busy snacking, snapping pictures and whatnot. It's like so. This is mm hmm picture picture whatever. Yeah. Um, but we did go to one of the temples where like I think. I said this is where Jesus had been and whatnot. Dude, that's gnarly. It, it's crazy. And just like, even at the time, I didn't quite, I was a, being on the Ozzy tour and going on one of those, it's kind of like, hmm. It's kind of funny you were <laughs> on an Ozzy tour going there. <laughs> Ozzy Feet tour. Bats, I know, and, and then we're going to do to this. It's like it was just interesting because obviously I'm like I'm a Christian, and a lot of those people are not, yeah. you know. And then just like so, it was just interesting being in that environment. I felt like I, I don't want to say I felt like I couldn't geek out. I guess the Christianity would be a subgenre of Judeo, yeah, or a Jew Judaism, Judaism, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like how we subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, and actually, you know what? I feel like a lot of um, my impression of other countries were a little skewed because we were there around the um, the World Cup mm-hmm. and whatnot. And regardless of where you are, who you are, where you're coming from, the World Cup is a massive deal everywhere in the world. I don't care, except maybe in America. But everywhere in the world, the World Cup, when mm. that shit happened, it's like, okay, everybody. Is it more unifying or is it? It is. Yeah. You know, like, especially because everybody loves, you know, football. You know, it's just like, it's a universal sport. Soccer. You know, football. Soccer. You get it together. Call it something else. But mm-hmm. when I'm here, it's called football. It makes sense. I get it. <laughs> but um, no, dude, a lot of the games that were happening, Everybody, everywhere you would go, it was just like, hey, man, the game's going on. Like, make friends easily, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, it already is a unifying moment. So, I felt like my, I guess, experience was a little skewed, but I feel like it also still was a good experience to have because a lot of time you get all these dividing elements about those countries that like I, i'm not i'm not entirely sure what the situation of israel is i know like overall we're still supporting israel i guess they're like our number one ally yeah. dude. we're like always having their back and uh regardless if you like them or not trump did get like five peace agreements yeah with israel and a lot of other is islamic uh with Iran and all that stuff. Uh, Iran, no, like the reason they were able to is because it's like all of them Iran. don't like Iran, <laughs> <laughs> Iran, whatever the fuck it's called. And then we were all over. Like that's the thing that pissed me off. Like when about that whole predicament. It's like why are we still giving shots to a country that is obviously saying screw you, we're gonna do what we want. Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Like even then, that's the one thing with Obama that I didn't personally like. Yeah, it's just Dems like, are always working with them. Like we were always just giving them like a slap on the wrist and keep going, a slap on the wrist yeah. and keep going. I'm just like, dude, like you're not easy. You're not making this any easy. Just call it what it is, and you know, obviously nobody likes them. Do what you got to do. You mm-hmm. know, it's just like that. That pissed me off. Um, but just being in Israel, I had a great time. I mean, the city was like in the hummus. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sure it's next My level. My days, that hummus looked nothing like those Sabre were eating in those fucking pack, man. That shit was crazy. It was crazy. I can't imagine, man. Like, fucking, the, where the actual food came from, it must be next level compared. Like, <laughs> I, dude, even Popeye's chicken, I bet you, is better in Louisiana <laughs> than it is here in Tennessee. I know. It, it was crazy because, I, like I said, it was. I, was, I just <laughs> didn't want to be there. I'm just like, 
screw this place. I don't want to be in this room. Like the whole time, like literally, we we left Spain. How and, come? Why? Why was that? That, that must have been initially, right? Before yeah, it was got, initially. Yeah. Why and, is that? Um, I don't know. I guess just the Middle East in general. Like, you just not want to be there. No, I not really. You. It's just not my favorite. Kind of like me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no you know, desire like, to be there. <laughs> like that. That sentiment of like even getting there, trying to get into the country, dude. We stayed at that airport for a minute. Yeah. People had to come get us. It was just like, dude, they're always attacked, man. You mm-hmm. don't even understand. Like they built that wall because there was always Muslim like kamikaze bombers coming in to try to fuck with them. Damn. Do you know our our back in the 1700s our American Navy was created because of Islamic terrorists? Really? Yeah. Uh, Thomas Jefferson and like Benjamin Franklin actually. Uh, went over there to like chat with some of them and Thomas Jefferson like he read the Quran and all that and you can google all this um basically said there is no negotiating with them they just want us to die dang so that's why we created our, our navy to fight back islamic terrorism dang so i didn't know that yeah brady it's it's weird mm. it's just like but it's been going on for thousands of years of now granted like that could be a reason why people aren't really fucking with them over there. Uh, granted, it doesn't mean all of them are yeah. that, that way, but it's not helping. Yeah, but I think it's it's just also because, you know, the faith and the denomination that we're in, it's easy to look at that and, you know, condemn, you know, a whole, I guess, denomination of faith. But, like, and I always point back to the crusade, but, like, the shit that the crusade did was... The right. crusade did that because of the Islamic... Uh, taking over countries. That's why the Crusaders were put in there to take land back. That's not what From I. From my understanding, that's what that is. We can research that later. Yeah. Don't quote any of us. Yeah. On don't that. quote any of us. <laughs> this is like we are talking yeah. off the top of our head. Yeah. Right now. Off the dome. Literally, just like like, and that this is why I like this, just because like, we're just talking about stuff, and yeah. we know we're not all knowing. Yeah. But, like, just like Joe Rogan. Yeah. You know, like he just says, "Don't fucking ever listen to me." <laughs> but I mean, dude, you're Joe Rogan. You're probably one of the most popular people in the world. Yeah. So like, that, people are gonna listen to you. Yeah. You we're know? not there yet, so we can no. get away with some stuff. But that's my understanding yeah. of it, though, was that the Crusaders were sent in to take back land. See, to me, like the the idea of the Crusaders has always been like, you know, they were trying to have, you know, Christianity be the only faith. If you didn't abide by that, they would force you to take the Christian. The that's Christian what faith. Islamic uh, faith people had been doing for longer than Christianity mm. was even a thing. But then my point is, you know, like why is you know, the Muslim faith, you know, so, like, still under that negative connotation when we were also doing the same thing. And I say that Because you can think of any other time other than the Crusades? No, that's the same. So that's once. Yeah. Not saying it was good. <laughs> no, 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 not saying, like, but, like, that, it, it doesn't tend, it's easy to look at another one if there's always been the negative thing. I feel like, it's like, there's other religions, too, oh, Of course. It's, we're just thinking of those two, because they're, like, the They're biggest. the main ones. Yeah. yeah they're the main ones. I'm one. sure there's been little, like, little things, it, 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 Religion has been the thing of war for thousands, yeah, thousands of years. years like, it ain't this ain't started now. This is this is not the first conversation. Yeah, like about it's that, just like sure. now where it's like starting to chill out and like it's just the the Muslims that are, are not the Muslims, but mm-hmm. the radical. Yeah, ones the radical are Muslims. the ones who keep it going, and that's yeah. like why we don't understand, I guess, or like because it's like twenty twenty one, bro. Yeah. It's, you need, I don't know, like some people like hitting in the deep south and just be like, you need a little Jesus in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I appreciate with the 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 Christian faith though is the is right and wrong. Mm. You know, forgiveness. That was the big thing with like Jesus and all that. And you know me, I'm not religious at all really but those values why that you're not religious yet you were i don't know like you wear like uh what saint thomas oh it's saint anthony saint anthony it was just a we grew up catholic so Mm. and gma would always like whenever she was like missing the remote or something oh saint anthony help (laughs) me find this remote control (laughs) because he's like the patron saint of lost uh things or something uh, what, I forget. Lost and found or something? just lost <laughs> items or some shit like that <laughs> um i also have a saint cecilia too that's a patron saint of music i think upstairs. i remember you when you got that one i, I am like i believe in all that, that that's stuff. what i was I'm saying just like i'm doing my thing yeah i don't like go i just don't i don't go to church i don't go hardcore with stuff or anything like that i got faith and i'm like good with that mm-hmm. you know so it's more so like I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to ask for help. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can ask help to him for sure. I I know, but we've chatted kind of a little bit on it where I'm like, (laughs) where it's just kind of, the story is kind of long. I'm not getting into it as personal. No. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, me when it comes to religion, honestly, like I, I fell off a bit. Um, I, 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 there, I have been a few times where I'm just like, I remember having like that deeper, you know, connection to where I could feel it. It was so weird. Yeah, you know, like, and it was a lot of times, probably some of my most trying time when I was, you know, on a come up in the touring industry. You know, like that shit, man. I've done a lot of stuff that I personally didn't think I could do. Now, mm-hmm. whether, you know, not saying that, you know, and, and everything my dad's always told me, do the do your very best and then God will take care of the rest. Yeah. You know, and then so it's just like I've always kind of just carried that around with me. And, you know, when put in trying times, it's good to kind of just have that faith and whatnot. But, like, lately with all that stuff, man, I don't know. Like, not saying that I, that I don't believe. It's just like I'm not as hardcore. I'm not as in tune with it lately. And I know it. Um, and I've been trying to do some stuff about it. But honestly, it's just like, if I haven't done anything about it, it means it's, I don't want to say it's not as important, but it's just like there's other things that take priority, I guess. It's just you're handling your shit, dude. Well, it's just, it's it's like Bruce Almighty, man. It's mm-hmm. being the miracle. It's not like wanting one or yeah. like nonstop praying and asking one. For, like yeah. to me, I've only really prayed four times and they were Damn. huge things, Damn. you know, where it was just everything was out of my control mm-hmm. and like it just hardcore, like the first one, it was a while ago. I'm not going to into mm-hmm. it, but like literally like I almost like save them <laughs> you know, Damn. when they're just things that like I can't control, yeah. I guess. So, but that, that's just, you know, yeah. something about me. I mean, the prayer is like to say, like, there's power in prayer, and obviously, it's just like whatever you know, concerns and whatnot, you just give it up to you know, the higher one. And you know, like, I don't want to do that though, I want to handle it. I mean, I get what you're saying, no and, one's saying don't handle it, but like, it's just still like the the principle, not, not even the principle, it's just like. I guess it's just a, the thing you do just to be able to build that connection because the connection with God is basically like a connection between a son and his father. You yeah, know, sure. you want to keep maintaining that relationship and praying is kind of just checking in on them, even though he already knows what you're going through, but it's still like actively checking in. It's like yeah. me saying like, I have a best friend, but Oh, I want to deal with everything myself. I don't want to bother my best friend. I'm not going to reach out. Yeah. Innocent without the whole dad son thing, but like, it's like a relationship in general mm-hmm. and like everything else it needs to be maintained. And yeah, it's just making that effort because a lot of time with God, it's all about making that effort and, you know, showing that, you know, you either want him to be in your life or you want him to you see what you're doing and know that you're pure of heart and with no It's a good end. comparison. You know what it's I mean? Like, it is on you to keep that relationship yeah. alive. No, it is. It's, and, and that's the thing, like, a lot of people, and even myself, like, you know, like, well, you'll think, the man, it's fine. And, like, dude, like I said, there, there are some days, like, my mom told me she got the vaccine the other day. I personally am not for it. Yeah, but like Gma told me she's scheduled to do it. Yeah, like my mom told she she works in the school, so like I'm not gonna, you know, obviously tell her what to do. Mm-hmm. But to me, my my funky thing, and I even told my dad, I'm just like my funky thing is like I'm researching online and I'm not seeing anything negative about the vaccine, and to me that freaks me out. Mm. because it makes it seem like okay only look at this it's positive everything's good and rosy and then you go on tiktok and you see some chick that's like i just got the vaccine and my whole left side of my face is freaking paralyzed and like her left eye is twitching like a mug and it's like oh that's one of the side effects i'm just like i don't want that shit yeah you know what i mean and it's just like no but I heard that the Johnson and Johnson one is like seemingly better in comparison okay. to Pfizer and whatnot. And even my dad and I were talking, and he did G Mop about that. She literally just told me last night when I was going for a walk. Yeah, like my, my dad and I, we talked about, it and he agrees. And he was just like, "Well, he's like, well, the Johnson and Johnson one strain, like that one seems to not have as much, not necessarily a side effect, but like people don't seem to have that much of a reaction to mm-hmm. it. Versus the Pfizer seems to be the one that's like, you know." has a little bit more of a reaction. I'm just like, <laughs> I was talking to a guy from Turbone and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, go get the vaccine. I'm like, you know, yeah, do you know people who got vaccinated? I'm just like, yeah, I know some like, you know, my neighbor's wife. Like ex- got vaccinated. Oh, she did? Yeah, you can ask her about it if she wants. She seems chill. Yeah, yeah. But like they were talking about like, yeah, my neighbor, uh, my neighbor's wife got vaccinated and she's like, oh yeah, she's in the medical field. She's like, yeah, so how's she doing? I'm like, she's fine. I'm like, but Bone, I'm like, how, how do I know that I'm getting the same shit that she's getting? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when Trump got vaccinated, am I getting the same shit he's getting? Yeah. Or is he getting something different? 
You know what I mean? Like, it's all about, like, you can still put it under that name, Pfizer or whatever, but mm-hmm. am I getting the exact same shit that he's getting? Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. Like, to me, like, as of right now, when I, I keep asking people about touring. It's like, so how are you feeling about touring? Do you think we'll, you know, still be out in, you know, in September? And um, my camp, they, they seem to be positive because, like, some festivals in the UK are selling tickets now mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, so... Nope. It, it's looking, yeah, I mean, it's looking like, you know. Dude, cases have gone down, like, I think it's cases have gone down 77%. Yeah. But now Bruh. No. Bruh. <laughs> 77%. Like, we're all, we're, like, by April, everything should be good. Doesn't mean that Biden's not going to fucking still be saying y'all should wear a mask anyways, like Fauci was saying. Oh, just because you get the vaccine doesn't mean you have to, like, stop wearing masks and stuff. Like, then what's the fucking point of taking it, jackass? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point that I'm just like, okay, then why am I like, and and they talk about the whole term of like herd immunity. If like you know, obviously you got like a a, like a good amount of people with the vaccine, and even if there's some that don't have, I the think vaccine. only twelve percent of this country has been vaccinated right now. And yeah. I understand that, like you know, what was it Switzerland or Sweden was all about the herd immunity. Yeah. They also got a fraction of the population yeah, we, we have, do. so <laughs> it's going to take us a little longer to get herd immunity, which. Again, we've talked about before, you're not stopping the wind. Yeah. Everyone's probably going to get this fucking shit. Most people are probably going to be people. immune in some fucking way. You yeah. know, there's the, the asymptomatic people, and then there's the, some people who get it who don't even fucking feel anything. Yeah. From what I've heard, it's like the common thing is like loss of taste and smell and all that. Mm-hmm. So and a lot, of, a lot of people say they just had that and nothing else. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's fucking different. Yeah, no, it, it really much so depends on, one, your immune system, and, you know, also, you know, how... I'm going to say receptive because I don't think anyone wants to receive it, but like. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank just, you, sir, man. I have another. <laughs> hey, can I get another one of these? Dude, um, fucking. Holy shit. I got to read you this fucking thing. <laughs> uh, fucking. Uh, I sent it to uh, Dad Thew. He thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, it's kind of a political thing if mm. you're you're reading it on from the right side of things, but. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> it was something about uh like people who are like vegans and like no GMOs and stuff. I thought it was like fucking hilarious. <laughs> One second, let me find it. Um, <sighs> shit, dude. I'm your biggest fan. I'm oh yeah. Sure. Uh, leftists are like, I only eat locally sourced, non-GMO, free-range vegan eggs with a side of racially balanced organic ketchup, but will run to receive a big pharma experimental vaccine quicker than you can say, oh yeah, inject me daddy Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny as fuck. But, and we're not taking sides, it's just, no, it's just, just reading the fucking funny ass meme yeah. I saw. It was just hilarious. Yeah, no, like like I said, like we, we talk about... If you, you got know, something funny about Trump or the right, send it to me, I'll laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, that, that's the thing, like, you know, like, we're not, like, taking side, we're just talking. Really. Yeah, it just, is. like, vocalizing, I guess, like, <laughs> what's in the head and just putting yeah. it up. It's kind of funny, I just went from, you know... I think the conversations I we have are just bouncing all over the place. But. <laughs> we literally went from talking about Israel and then, like, religion, and, and yeah. then now we're talking, now we're talking about, about Daddy Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a, such a weird progression. It's like, how do we go from? I don't know how we got there. We just did. Yeah, we just did. It's whatever. <laughs> what I was going to say, going back to the whole Israel thing, there were two countries I didn't want to go to: Russia and Israel. Yeah, and obviously two countries that we don't necessarily. Well, one of them we don't have the greatest relationship, but the other one I know it was mostly because it was in the center of so much like you know like chaos, chaos in general that yeah. I'm just like. And I also, I really didn't know anything about Israel. I'm just like, eh, is in the Middle East, not really interested. Um, but like I said, Israel was chill. Our joint was right there on the beach, which I am so freaking bummed. I never went in the freaking water. Why not? Because I had just gotten my freaking tattoo on my leg. Oh, bitch. Like, literally, it was you like... You couldn't cleanse in the Jesus water. <laughs> I almost did. Mm-hmm. I, I'd have probably gotten infected. Oh, damn. <laughs> I, I had literally, like... I got the tattoo mm-hmm. two days before we went to Israel. Really? Yes. Dang. And then two days before we went to Israel, so we get there, and I'm tat- ink is still fresh. And then, I don't know, two days later, we're at the fucking Red Sea, or mm-hmm. the Dead Sea, whatever. And I'm like, 
this is the water I can finally float in and I'm not going to be able to fucking float because of this freaking tattoo. Mm. So pissed. Dude, I was red. I'm like, Motherfucker. I'm like, man, screw this shit. I don't want to be the one floating because I can't float for shit. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't float to save my life and that was my one opportunity and I blew it because of a freaking tattoo that I had to get in freaking Madrid. Yeah. I was so mad. Damn. Still mad to this day. That shit um, but yeah, no, very much so, very much international, and I, w- I can see why, you know, just because of, like, the religious aspect of the country, mm-hmm. you know, like, of course it's going to attract people of faith from different countries, so, like, already, you're not saying that they're welcoming, one of the people at work, you know, she's from, you know, Israel, and she's like, yeah, like, he said, in America, we're like, don't want to hurt people's feelings. And uh, when we say a lot of things, she's like, over there, you got to get with the program, man. They're not Fuck about, yeah. They're not about that lie. They're just I'm like, say like it, it is. <laughs> I'm just like, I agree with that. Hell yeah. Um, and oh, yeah. Well, everyone over here is always worrying about people's fucking feelings. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, like, dude, if your track is trash, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. It, it's just like, you know, like, and that's always been, she's like, um, it, we were even having that conversation because it was literally me, my lead, and like, everyone else that was like American but of a different descent mm. understood like you know like Americans are just very like beat around the bush when yeah. they're talking about shit versus another country just like just say like it is it's probably why like we're so jarring to some people who come in here because like Dylan and I don't really beat around the bush yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're it's pretty like, like straightforward I think. yeah but I think some people like that you know I mean because like it's you not, don't get it a lot you don't get it at all so you, it makes you stand out in a yeah. sense you know and that that's one thing like like even when people text me about shit and I'm like text and back and Courtney's like no don't say it I'm just like but why you yeah know? fuck that it's a and it's like, I'm like well not even that just the shit that's being said like for instance a lot of my thing and I don't know how to handle this but to me I feel like I'm doing it the right way mm-hmm. she's like oh she's like really every time I text new people or people text me they put Terrence and they put an A in it versus all E's so like I've been thinking about I solved that problem by saying Terrence if you say Terrence you spell it correctly Terrence yeah Ter, T E T E R. That's how you spell your name, right? Yeah, T E R R E S E. Ter would technically be E A R. Terrence. Terrence. I'm sorry, bro. That's just it. Makes it easier to spell. It make reminds me how to spell it. It's okay. My brother, like my mom, fucking gave daily I mean, my sister a whack ass uh, uh, name or a spelling. Anyways, love you, big girl. Um, <laughs> D A L. E I G H. It's not like D A I L Y or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. When even that's yeah, she that. did it with Donovan too. She put an E there instead of an A. Like Donovan, it, it's Donovan, mm-hmm. and then Dalton. A lot of people don't have a U in there. It's just D A L T. That's a, ours is a A U. Mm. You know, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to mom, I guess. Shout out to mom. <laughs> yeah. But dude, like... Just to be different, you know. Yeah, well, like... Oh, I'm sorry. My Go little ahead. sister fucking had her first, like, pop-up shop the other day. She made, like, $1,000. It was awesome. Really? Yeah. Well, congrats. Yeah, congrats, big girl. Make it very good. Yeah. Hey. She, like, uh, did a bunch... Of, it was for, like, Valentine's Day and stuff. I think I remember you posting on your story. It was during the week storm here. Mm-hmm. So, you know how, like, the states just got fucked up by this winter storm? Yeah. Daily was out there in, like, zero-degree weather selling this shit, and people were still coming. Dang. It was cool. I guess it's different when you're I'm up a there, like, in the... I'm a, I'm a hustler. <laughs> when you're up there, like, Buffalo or, like, uh, what area is she in? Rochester? We're all the way on the right side, dude. Buffalo and Rochester are all the way on the left. Everyone gets that wrong. Everyone yeah. always think, thinks upstate it's Buffalo. It's like, no, it's the entire fucking state. Everything, I know it's the entire freaking state. Yeah, and everyone who thinks, like, everything below, like, Poughkeepsie is downstate New York. I don't even know Everything above. Is. It's just, like, kind of, it, it's it's one of those, like, towns, like, you know how New York kind of, it comes up and then, like, that? And sure. then it comes down to the city. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the southern tier over here, and then it goes down into New York mm-hmm. City. Yeah, like, Poughkeepsie kind of, like, is still going across that. So anything below, like, that southern tier is all downstate to me. I'm from upstate New York, so I know. (laughs) Yeah, of course you know. Like, to me, like, New York has always been, I think it's mostly because, like, the major city other than New York, New York, is either Buffalo or Rochester. No, it's Albs, bro, the capital. Albany. Yeah, in Albany. But, like, to me, like... Those are the places that also people like. I got you. Will like mostly. I don't want to say cater to. Shouts to Buffalo. Yeah, I fuck with Buffalo. Yeah, I haven't been there, but oh no, no, I lied. We went there f- to watch a Buffalo game against Cincinnati. It was cold as fuck. I've been to Buffalo. Been to Rochester. Uh, Cause the ex girlfriend used to be around those next to it, so that's how I know that area. You dated someone from upstate? Yeah, remember Jesse. 
Oh, I didn't know she was from upstate. Oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> Bro, that was a lifetime. I go give a fuck. <laughs> that was then. Yeah, I know it was then. Yeah, but that's how I know those areas yeah, because like, yeah. I flew into one of those cities and gotcha. from touring as well. I hear Rochester's chill. Yeah, it's chill. I think my grandpa's from there. Papa, uh, nah, Papa Potter. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I forgot his name. <laughs> Freaking uh, Russia. And also, that was also like during like the um, the World Cup and whatnot. So, look, I, I do think that that really affected things. They they must have had like a general mass email from Putin saying like, "We're going to host the World Cup. Be nice to people. We need people to come back." <laughs> like I don't know, but like I just felt like that. I, I just felt like that. Everybody in Russia got a mass email from Putin saying like, "If you fuck up this one, you're going to jail for the rest." You're going of the to the gulag. <laughs> Like, be nice to people. I have no idea how Russia is. I just know, like, one of our, uh, we actually have a Russian on our team. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Uh, in Russia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he helps out dealing with the marketing side of things. And, mm-hmm. like, me and him have been contacting. Sorry, Russian, that I don't, like, get on top of, like, the like making the ads and stuff that you need. But, like, you're very cool. Like, mm-hmm. he, he goes, we, we just call him the Russian. Yeah. I, I think his name's Oleg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he even put on like you know the Russian hat. It's yeah. like fuck yeah, I'm Russian. Yeah, yeah dude. All right, cool. So yeah, like, yeah. dude, again, it's just it's it's just because your government's shitty doesn't mean the country and the people yeah, are. You know. So and you could say that to us too, Russian. Mm-hmm. Like, just because our government is shitty doesn't mean the people are. Yeah. You know, we're 100. all out just doing our own thing. We just want to be left the fuck alone yeah. to do our thing. You know. Hundred percent. I think that's the... almost. That, that has to be like ninety five percent of fucking people in every single country. It's just <laughs> the lead to the leaders. Fuck off. Yeah, dude. Help your people and fuck off. Basically. Yeah. You can take that message all the way to Africa and uh, you play can take it, it everywhere, dude. Just Especially let people do their thing. Like if you want to go to war, you do it. <laughs> yeah. You get in the plane. You get behind the. Freaking yeah. Here's gun. your M sixteen, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> you. Well, that that's the thing. Like you know, like and again, going back to like the whole like Africa in general, that shit needs to freaking. It's just I don't understand how you can have a leader in power for thirty years, man. Yeah, like that to me is. I don't believe in career politicians. No. You, there should be term limits. There like if you're eighty limits. something years old, ninety years you old, should. like fucking anybody, like yeah. Pelosi's, Biden, M- Mitch Paul McConnell. M- McConnell, whatever the fucking Republican cunt is. Yeah, Mitch uh, McConnell. Friggin' get out of here. You should not be in office for more for than like long. ten years. Like you know, like and that's the thing. Like you know, like and even even here, it's like I mean, like it, it's still you know like happening. But over there, man. Like back home, it's like it's a different beast. Like people just don't want to get out the freaking office. Like that one time I told you, like the president back in Ivory Coast, he already had he was at the end of his two terms. He changed the constitution to where like he's like, Oh, I didn't run the first time doesn't count. So like now I'm it's my second term based on the new constitution that I just switched. Mm. So like that was like corruption. Oh, dude, it's it's not even. You said it's pretty bad over yeah. there, right? I mean, like, like everywhere. I mean, like everywhere in Africa, you can get away with it. You know, yeah. nepotism, big, 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 big nepotism. That's not something I'm proud of, but like it over there, like no fucks given. Like you know somebody, you're getting it. Yeah, basically. Um, even like my driver's license. I was ready to just take the exam mm-hmm. for my driver's license, but everybody that was in line was like, "Listen, if you don't pay, they'll flunk you." Mm. so like they want you to pay them they don't care if you're a good driver or a bad driver oh they just want some they just money want you under the table it's, yeah it's basically yeah, yeah. here's 20 bucks so if I can give you your yeah thing. Like 20 bucks 50 bucks here you right. don't even need to take the test or they just kind of sit through it <clears throat> you'll still do the driving you know I got you yeah but that like they, yeah I think it's mostly driving I think I don't think there's much of like actually no there is a test and you can pay for that as too you know, and I I didn't pay for that. Yeah. But like, and you actually no, I think I had to pay for the test, the written test. One of them, actually, I might have had to pay for both. To be yeah. quite honest with you, but it's one of those like they'll flunk you if you don't pay. It's just like okay, well, how about if I want to go through and do it the right way, and then you're forcing me to have to pay. So like they're forcing that tradition onto other people, even mm-hmm. though you may not want that, and being like okay, well, you want to go the right way, well, you'll fail, mm-hmm. basically. 
Um, but then there's cases where, like, I was leaving the country and, you know, my they were asking me for a visa. And as far as I'm concerned, I never had a visa, but I also didn't have an Ivorian passport. Mm. And because I only had an American passport, they were asking for a visa. So I was basically standing in line until some dude behind me just, you know, slinged the person at the airport like 50 bucks and they just let me go. Word. That is literally, like, how, like, I was able to just, like, because, like, everything was fine. but it Sounds it, like politics to me. Well. It's just the politics of the streets down there, man. That's just politics here too, man. The lobbyists and all that fucking shit. Like I don't know like all the details and stuff. Like we talked about it the other day, Mm -hmm. dude. If you go into politics and come out rich, you're corrupt. Yeah. I don't care what side you're on. You're a fucking piece of shit. You get you getting some from somewhere. But no, that's the thing. That that becomes the name of the game. Like that's one thing about um how you call it, like a house of cards. Dude, when I watched that, I'm like it started with scandal. Show so good. It started with scandal. Fuck Kevin Spacey though. <laughs> I can't remember. What did he do again? I don't remember. He did some. I, <laughs> I like. I was like, fuck that dude. I don't remember what he did. I was just like, oh, it's unanimous. Everyone hates him. I think he uh, was like, was touching like young boys or something like that or something weird. I think it, it was because like he for for them or he did something and said he was he came out and said he was like gay or I something. Know he so came, wouldn't like. I really know he fun. came back out and said he was gay, and I'm just like, mm, you feel, I feel like you're using that as a cop. He was though. hooking up with dudes in that show, but I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, how do you know if that's not what the show wanted? You know? No, I think that's what they did want. He was cool with it. I yeah, I'm just saying, like that show was fucking cool as shit. Oh yeah, it like, just sucks that it was kind of. I never watched the last season with yeah, uh, with his wife and power. Yeah, did you watch it? No, I saw, nah, I, I didn't watch it. Either. I, I started watching it, and I kind of just. Mm-mm. Like, knowing all that happened, it kind of just ruined that last season to where, like, I wish it would have just happened organically. Yeah. Versus to me, it felt like it was just like a toss-up salad. It'd be like, okay, well, he's fired. I guess we're going to have to get to the part where she does things. So, like, I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even follow how they, like, killed him off. I don't they even... just killed him off. I saw like the first episode. I yeah, I think it was it. just like because it was supposed to continue as if like oh, he was going to be in the next season. And then he I was. Guess he was going to be like behind the chair or like behind the the scenes with uh, his wife or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I like her a lot. She's, yeah, uh, she's oh, dude, Robin she, Wright. She's yeah, the shit. She is great. Like it, it's one of the few shows that I didn't watch in a while because Courtney was watching it, mm-hmm. and like I kind of came into the room and just like, oh yeah, that's this guy's name, that's this dude's name. I like remember the characters. I'm just mm-hmm. like, it was such a good show, but like more importantly, so, and I, I know it's you know a TV show and there's obviously elements of fiction, but like to me, it, it felt a little too real. You, you oh know, yeah, you you know what I mean? Like in some of the stuff that was happening, I'm just like, okay. Why do I feel like this is something that like it's absolutely real, dude? Yeah, yeah it's, it's happening now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like that show to me, like, and also, you I mean you learn about the different branches of government as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was surprised that he was too in the show. I thought like you know Kevin Spacey would be a Republican, but it seems like he is a Democrat in the show. No, they are Democrats. Yeah, the yeah, that's what yeah, I'm they make fun of the Republicans. I remember specifically in the because uh, they were in the Black Caucus or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. and then like the Republican comes in, who's played by that. Uh, I think it was like General. You remember Flag from Suicide Squad? Mm, which you ever one? see Altered Carbon? I did the first season. Uh, I don't the white know. guy, the 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 main character, whatever. Anyways, they just like they just kind of make fun of him and all that shit. But like, dude, all that he does is like what they do. Like, I guarantee it. Yeah. It's just like, like how, like, okay, I'll give you this day if you support this ticket on this day. Yeah, that's all it is, man. It's like, you're just like, but why the fuck did this guy, why did it go this way? And it's like people in the background just like, me, 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 me. Yeah. Me, me, me. I'll give you this. Oh, you want to run for Senate? Oh, yeah, I got you. I'll get you the first. Yeah. They got the whips. Yeah. Because he's a whip in the beginning mm-hmm. or whatever. He's the one who kind of like, yeah, with the house and all. Pushes things t- in a certain direction. Because mm-hmm. he was like, a, he was a whip in the house, I think. And so like, he was out there whipping shit up, man. Yeah, and shit up and like but it started with the show scandal i'm just like wait a minute and scandal was like obviously a a level above but like it kind of just showed me the importance of pr you know like having like a good press or a good story Mm -hmm. to distract people from what's actually going on and like and then you put that in tandem with like house of cards i'm just like holy crap these two shows you know like scandal after a while it's okay this is too much and then i could like as much as I love Kerry Washington, like her lip game is too strong for me, man. Mm-hmm. She does these weird facial expression. Everybody, if anyone listens to it, they'll know what I'm talking about. Like, is that that a s- scandal show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never watched it. So, like, but the the chick in there, Kerry Washington, yeah. her lip game is too strong, man. She was mm-hmm. just, 
<laughs> <laughs> like when she's crying, like she's like she like just like crunches up like her scrumps up her lips and it's just like I'm like, bruh, stop. Like the she did a there's a TV show on Hulu with Reese Witherspoon, yeah. Little Fires Everywhere or whatever. That show was great. Like we we like kind of started watching. It's like, oh, that was cool. And Corey and I started watching. It's like, yo, this like it's the one. It's probably one of the few shows that we watch every time a week came through. Like mm-hmm. we would just wait for the episode and just watch it as it came out. Um, season two coming out um, soon of that. So that scandal. Oh, not scandal. Um, scandal little fires everywhere. It's called Little Fires Everywhere on Hulu. Uh, word. Um, I still got to finish season two of the boys. Oh really? Yeah, me and Dill are watching uh, My Hero season four right now, dude. Didn't season four already come out? Yeah, a while ago, but it's in English now. Oh, okay. so now we're kind of crushing through it. Well, Fucking love My Hero. Man. The ball. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of stopped. I got to the part where like they were like went to that um, Yakuza's house and like they were fighting in there. Yeah. The last big fight that I remember um, is that big roly poly guy and the guy that like. Um, Harden his body to like his oh so yeah the punching dude yeah and gotcha. then he was fighting those two three dudes by himself or whatever mm-hmm. um so the, I think that's the one major last fight actually no wait no 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 that's not the last thing I got to the point where like uh, Deku was fighting that weird magician guy with the hat and like oh, bubble gum ago. like bubble girl whatever and yeah. he was trying to attack the academy when they're having a festival and they were fighting in this like construction site you know. And then they ended up catching Deku and whatever, but you know, I, I, that's where I'm at right now. Probably right. going to go have to go back and do a due diligence. Dude, I'm waiting for Demon Slayer season two, man. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on with that. Demon freaking Slayers, I laugh my ass Dude, off. Dude, it's such a sleeper, such a sleeper, man. Like, I remember, you, I still remember. It was a couple of years ago mm-hmm. too. Now, like, God damn, I like, hurry up, fuck. <laughs> dude, that fucking when he was getting turned into a Spider Man, that fucked me up a little bit. Oh, dude, dude, that was gross. Was that like, was like holy shit, dude. Yeah. Like his body's getting tinier. Like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was dude, fucked. That, that that show like kind of just like set some things apart, man. It was like. It was great. Like, I mean, like... I'm glad when there's, like, a, a one that comes out every now and again that's just like, oh, it's on the level. Holy yeah, shit. exactly. Yeah, like, it's not like, oh, you got to get to it. It's yeah. just like... It, it took... It, like Not that it took a while to get into, but, like... There was something about it that kept you interested. Yeah, yeah. Like, not a lot of shows do that. Yeah, yeah. It you was, know, like, I don't... Like, even uh, Sword Art Online, awesome season one. Season two was cool. Mm. I didn't really fuck with season three. But, like, it, it didn't capture me like Demon Slayer did. Yeah. And it's... Probably because there's, I don't know, it's just characters. They're, they're just, who's more interesting? You know, how the story is. Mm-hmm. It's like so many things go into it. Or like Attack on Titan is fucking the shit, but still I would say Demon Slayers, I probably like a little bit more than Attack on Titan. Oh yeah, Attack on Titan. I mean, like, because it's a different genre, really. It's it, its own it thing, is. you know. It, it, but I do love how that started, because it starts off strong with like the dude's mom getting eaten right in front of him and her blood getting spilled on his face and i was like holy shit yeah what are we watching gets eaten the first like episode or two like like his arm fucking flies off Mm -hmm. i was like holy shit dude Dude, like fatality there's two other seasons i gotta get to where's my guy (laughs) (laughs) he barely makes it through the first season i know it's even real quick yeah like it's just it's crazy like you know like uh that show i think started like and that's why after i think i watched attack on titans any show that didn't have fatality into it yeah kind of turned me off just because to there me, is like, a death in my hero in season four which is cool oh really yeah it's it's dope like dude man okay don't get you in your feels don't say anything that okay. one and then that like later on there's like fucking something because like it's cool right, you, you yeah, gotta yeah, watch yeah, it. yeah fucking gotta dope. Watch it. i need fucking the new deadly seven deadly sins too like i need to finish that i, I got turned off oh man I got you gotta off. read the manga i think dude like, i got turned off because like the whole meliodas i'm just like okay dude just like, just get to it i'm like to me i don't know like it just felt like like that part where he was fighting all the seven deadly sins and like they like fucked them up real bad yeah and then he stabbed him a couple times yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then he came back and then i think when he came back he was like the the previous Meliodas that he used to be, or at least like fighting it yeah. from coming out, and then that one I don't know if it, he's a deadly sin I think, but he like serves I guess Meliodas back in the demon world, and he was like fighting two of the previous um those two guys the giant 
uh, that was uh, I know you're talking about the green yeah guy. the giant the giant and the fairy the king guy yeah 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 the, and then the he was fighting that dude and they both got fucked up yeah and then after that the part where Meliodas wakes up and then goes with that one he wakes up at one point while they was fighting that guy off and then that's when he wakes up and he tells Elizabeth screw it you know let's mm-hmm. just go and then he's like fully like the demon guy and after that I didn't watch yeah um so I kind of just like yeah, I fell off of that, but it had some good scenes and whatnot. And it was like say it, it, it was it was a good watch. Um, not on the anime route, but I did you watch the movie Ma? Man. Ma? Yeah, M A. It's like um. What about? It's about this like a it's like a, a thriller kind of like rated R movie, but like it's about this. Is it an anime? No, it's, it's a movie. movie. Oh, it's on HBO. I don't watch a lot of fucking. It's TV, on HBO bro. though. I like you. It's like I don't turn on the TV until it's like nine p.m. That's fine. And that's, then like it's like two hours of like Stargate or like some random ass show. Like it's mainly else. just some noise so I can be like doing something on my phone. Watch something else. No, I don't want. I don't want to focus on it. Oh. And I'm like. There's times when I want to get invested in characters. Mm-hmm. So like there's like this this space between like a really good show like My Hero mm-hmm. and then I just want to fuck off for a couple of weeks before yeah. getting invested <clears throat> in new characters. Like Cobra Kai season 3, I haven't watched it yet cuz I I got to be ready for it. Like cuz I'm going to get into it. I'm going to watch like four episodes in a row and then I'm going to yeah, watch all of them. I know, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. But like like I said, I need I Okay, it's gonna be like okay. Now I'm ready for like to focus. Yeah, on it. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, because I'm fucking doing shit all day. So and I want to. I need a deload. Mm-hmm. You know, where I just like chuck on Stargate, and it's like you don't really need to be paying attention to the story, mm-hmm. like to really get what's going on. That's like that's like what the ranch is for me. Like sometimes I just think like to like just unplug my brain. Like I, I was watching those. Like I think I told you that I was watching this reality TV show. Are you the one? And I'm just like that's too much. I went like I went down a rabbit hole on that one. Like the yeah. ranch is just perfect. Just gives me what I need. Just laughter here and there mm-hmm. in the background, kind of <clears> like <throat> on the you know two and a half man, which you know I love that show. Um, but yeah, the ranch is pretty cool, and that's sure. it. just watch it. Turn my brain off. I'm just like, right, only gonna be thirty minutes of just pure laughter, and I'm just gonna keep moving. But there's another TV show called In Her Eyes that I started watching, which is like. Uh, it's, uh, it's I'm sad at the beginning, so I'm not gonna say much about it. But it just looks interesting. Just very this guy, um, he is a psychiatrist that meets this chick out at a bar, and she was stood up by someone, one of her friends. But they meet up at a bar mm. that he had a um, feel like they're vibing with each other. Turns out the psychiatrist it was working at the firm that she works at, and she's the assistant of the psychiatrist that she met the night before. Mm. Turns out my dude is married and whatnot. So it's just like it's just interesting. I haven't yet seen. It looks very dark, and so I'm still at the beginning stages of it. Um, it's just like after getting enough work at one a.m., it's kind of like okay, do I watch a TV show and then go to bed, or do I just straight up go to bed? A lot of time I can't go to sleep, so I'll watch some of my soccer shit, and then I'll do some research on whatever needs to be done, and then I'll fall asleep. Mm-hmm. That's so like a lot of time that's two a.m., which sucks. So I'm trying to get that changed <laughs> to where like I'm not going to bed at two a.m. But like the cool thing is, even if I go to bed at like two, I'm still fine. Three is where it's like it hurts. <laughs> like I'm, as Courtney was saying, like oh yeah, like the everyone needs about like seven hours of sleep to be rested, and I'm just like. I can do with six, but I can understand. And I tried the seven hours, and I woke up, and I was more jacked. I could tell. Like, I was at work. I wasn't crashing by 11. I was, like, still there. And I was like, okay, well, I need to put a little bit more importance on that. You know, trying to... Sleep's important, dude. Yeah, man. They say at least six hours. You yeah, six six hours. six hours is what I would, you know, get on the daily. I would actually try to go less than that just because... But I ain't trying to get old quicker. You know, I'm trying to keep looking young and beautiful at, like, you know, 45. So we got to go to bed on time and keep that shit live, bro. I ain't trying to look all decrepit and old at 45. That's all right, you black. You won't be wrinkling that fast. I know. Yeah. Betty's great. Courtney, Courtney's like, oh, you don't put any face cream. It's like, no, I'm Got beautiful. I'm black. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's natural, bro. I don't gotta do nothing. All I need is cocoa butter. That's it. Cocoa butter. <laughs> oh cocoa man. Cocoa butter and rum. Oh, dude, give me so like she. Oh, uh, I don't think she used as much cocoa butter as as. I don't think she used as much cocoa butter before she met me. Like, I tried everything, dude. Like, I've went, I've I've did the test. I've tried all the different brands of lotion and. 
end up coming back full circle to cocoa butter. And it just works, man. Even for my tattoos, it's it works. You know, it's just like people are like, oh, use this cream, exfoliating cream. It keeps your tattoo alive. I'm like, no, nah, my issue is not the tattoo being alive. It's my skin being dry. <laughs> so that's how we fix that issue. Like, if the skin ain't dry, then we looking good, which I probably am due for another tattoo at some point. I want to finish my right leg. I kind of want to do like a, uh, not a like a jungle, but like kind of want to do like some sort of jungle shit. Because I already, I, it's just weird. Like, you remember my figurine, the skeleton gorilla, and you can see like its skull on the bottom. It's almost like he peels his, like, um, his head off or whatever. And I kind of want to put like a little bit more like fauna, like banana leaves here and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And for some reason, I kind of want to include Black Panther in that. I feel like it would fit. Like, Little Wakanda forever? Fuck yeah. Yeah, it could. Shouts I, to, uh, fucking forget his name. I wasn't ready. Fuck's his name. Uh, you can say the. I can see it. Oh, it's yeah, like but... CB or something, like his initials. Um, Dichala. That's all I know. Chikala. Chikala. That's actually how my sister called her cat Chala. I'm just like, wow, where the ghost is. <laughs> Can't believe you died. Sucks. Yeah. Can't believe Chadwick you was... Boseman. Yeah. yeah, CB. Can't believe he was dealing with all that shit when he was like, you know, filming all those. Dude, movies. for real. Shouts to him. Yeah, man, like, um, yeah, that, that wasn't ready for that. But, yeah, no, I'm just kind of like, I feel like it'd be a good environment for the guy. So just, to, I've always wanted a, a, a sleeve on my on my leg, and then eventually there'll be a sleeve on this left arm. and Keeping it below the knee or all the way up the thigh? Um, Below the knee. Yeah, it's a little I weird going to the thigh. Yeah, for me, it's I don't just, like thigh tattoos. Not on women, not on <clears> anything. <throat> it's just odd to me. Just kind of. On women, it really depends. If it's like a thigh or some shit, I'm like. Like how Cardi's got it, like that's too much for me personally. So, I mean, she rocks it. But. Yeah, she rocks the shit out. It looks good too. She got to touch it up, written like last year or something. It's funny, like every every single year, it seems like a they get thicker. You know, like it's all like surgery and stuff. It's not like they're not um. What's her name? Uh, what's that hot girl shit girl? Uh, I'm a savage, classy, bougie. Megan the Stallion. Yeah, she. You don't think that's she's nat- surgery? natural, bro? That's a natural booty. Natural. Interesting. I would put natural on that. She looked like I'm she... I'm not going to... Like, she's hot. It's just... I'm not really into her music personally. Like, I listened to about half that album, and I was just like... It's garbage. I'm just <laughs> not into it, man. Like, I don't... Like, these topics you're rapping about and singing about... Not I'm just interesting. Like, they're, they're hot, but, like, I'm good... You're good she, after she, track one. I'm baby. great. I mean, yeah, they're all the same <laughs> song, you know? And, like, even the production to me wasn't, like, anything... New. It mm. wasn't anything different, you know. Like at least Cardi's first album, that cla- I don't remember what it was called. Uh, like the tracks were fucking <clears throat> dope. Like cause she had a little Latin flair to like some mm. of them. Like I like it like that. Whatever that one was. Was it on that uh, her first album or in the second one? Because like I don't think she went that route on the I first don't even one. Know what her second one is, dude. Because I'm just over the like I don't know what you call like stripper rap. I don't know what you call it. Like I'm just not into that. Yeah. Shit. I mean, she did a lot of that before, but, like, her first album is the one that had, like, Bodak Yellow. Um, yeah, that had all the hits. So, like, like, like Because it won, like, Rap Album of the Year. It beat Astroworld. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. Not in a million years. Yeah. It's different. Like I said, it, it, I, I can see how and why just because of how popular she was. Invasion but, of Privacy was one. Yeah, that was out. the first one. I don't think one. she has another album yet. Doesn't she? She just I think has she this does. one. Oh, yeah, no, that is it. Hey, cause that's the one with Chance. I love that song with Chance that she has on there. Oh, I mean, she does have like other things before she like, told like gangsta, I'm gonna live my best life. bitch music. Told y'all, oh, I'm gonna live my best life. You know, Megan Thee Stallion's all natural, bro. I look, bro I mean, it's like do your thing, though. You know, like, I look at her, I'm just like natural. Yeah, she cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you <laughs> with that actually. That's pretty cool. Eh. Like, but, yeah, I'm not really personally into this stuff. <laughs> I just like a lot of like women like listen like I said like their music seemed to be empowering women to you know be more in phase with their Dude, fashion. even Ariana Grande is doing it man like that 34 35 song it's actually a good song but like in the chorus it's like like fuck me till the daylight you know like it's just that's what's right. happening yeah. that's what's cool I guess that's, that's what's what empowering is. making you more feminine uh be more in phase with that you know one thing well, I that, well that, that's what I was trying to figure out where it's like by empowering you and, and rapping and singing about stuff like that, it, it seems like it's the opposite. You think you feel like it's demeaning? 
in a sense. I don't know. It's like maybe I haven't really thought about it. No, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I think it's more so like um, I think the empowerment comes mostly from the fact that they are the one initiating a lot of the stuff that they're doing in a sense. Gotcha. Yeah. In the sense to where like a lot of those, you know, things are not initially being like, that's what's happening to me. I do this. If or if the guy doesn't do this, then gotcha. he's a bottom feeder. Like, you know, like whatever they would say. Like, yeah. So like it's just like in the lyrics, mostly making it like, OK, like if I want to do this, I'm going to do this. And he's going to get on his knees like and it's like they're the I mm -hmm. and we're the one subject to the action. And so like in the content. So like, <laughs> no, 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 but but I see I, I see how, you know, like, you know, it can to some people look at me just like, okay, so how is this empowering? But like to I, me I just don't get it. Yeah, it's, yeah, fine. Yeah. it's not meant for me. That's yeah, that's cool. But, no, I, I feel like doesn't I, mean it's a bad song. I yeah. fuck with that song. It was probably my second favorite on that album. Which one? Uh the Ari one. Oh, yeah. on the like Ariana. personally I wasn't like oh shit about the whole album. It was just kind of whatever i did yeah. like the or orchestration and the strings and stuff that they added i really i really only fuck with that 34 35 mm -hmm. song and the positions that single that came off of it every other song was just kind of i don't remember it i was um i was vibing hard to pink sweats after i left you know, pink Sunday. sweats the shit man Dude, i fuck with that album. i was Shouts like, to pink sweats yeah man, man. I, I was like i was vibing to pink sweats the whole when i got home and i was like working on the podcast a little bit i'm just like you know what I kind of just listen to all his stuff. It's and, a vibe, man. Every you know. song is like that's a, like that's a no skipper for me. Like I can listen to every yeah. single song in a row. It doesn't matter like what uh, what like what order or whatever. Like it, it was pretty solid. So like I I, I I dig it. You know, like it's definitely one of like uh, the 2021 finds. I'm just like okay, I think I'm gonna still keep listening to this guy. And even some of the songs, I'm like okay, I'm like I like this song. Like even like in some of the writings and whatnot. So like I, I thought it was pretty well well put, well done. Um, I feel like some of his I listened to also some of his other older stuff as well, which was pretty dope. And I'm always interested in seeing what artists are you know brought up. You know when you listen to new artists or like also found on this or like or if you're looking to this, listen to this guy as well. Mm. Um, and I think uh, I artists that would keep coming up is called Ruel R U E L Ruel or Ruel. You know, but it turns out I already had like a, one of his songs. Ruel. Yeah, from like a way back, I think when I bought the house, uh, and I was like, "Oh, that's this kid," mm. and he's just like, but I could tell the difference because like the song that I, the first song that I heard from him, um, back then, and then the song that I heard recently while listening to Pink Sweats was an older song of Ruel, mm. um, but I didn't like it as much, and then it's to me like just seeing that progression. Yeah. You know, it's just like, okay, I listen to that time. I was like, hey, I'm not really my cup of tea. But then, like, another one, you know, two, three years later, you listen, you're just like, okay. And, like, yeah, like, you you get the vibe. You see, like, the person. Yeah, sometimes music just hits you. At the, it needs to hit you at the yeah, right yeah, time. Yeah, like, yeah, I haven't gone through, like, Purp was getting into, like, Bob Dylan and stuff. He's still not really a fan. But, like, artists mm -hmm. like that, like Michael Jackson, whoever, like, it has to hit you at a certain time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, U2 hit me one summer where it was just, like, nothing but U2. Like, yeah. I got it. You know, or like the doors hit me for like a month. Yeah, it's like researching nothing but the doors, like was watching documentaries and learning all that stuff. I think like my favorite band has to be Alabama Shakes. Honestly, I mean, really? like, yeah, it's, I'm not. Like, I don't know anything about that band that I don't like. Mm. Like, and for having shot a show like at a festival with them, God, that's the most fun I've had on camera. Mm. Like the energy was raw. Um, what's her name? Uh, it's not it's not Stephanie. It's not Melissa. It's not Ashley. I can't remember the lead singer, but she is so good, so freaking good. Like energy on like the songs wise or just performance wise. Both. Because there's like, it's hard to like name what your favorite fucking you know band or music your artist is and all that stuff. Like my favorite band, I would probably have to say is Stained, even though they're kind of like not relevant at all mm -hmm. now. But like. I like Aaron Lewis as a songwriter and mm. a singer and all that stuff. And I would also chuck, like, Glenn Hansard in there and Damian Rice, like the Irish singer-songwriters. Mm. Like, may, may, more so, like, songwriters. You know, like, even Kenny Chesney hits a little different than yeah. most country artists. Because, like, to me, I see him more as a songwriter than I do even a country artist. Mm. I think he just has twang in his voice. That's why he went in there. Yeah. You know, um, 
where like he's just different than the rest of them because he's from or he's from the 90s he's an earlier time you know like that's when he started it was like 2000 when no no shoes kind of started he kind of just snagged the the jimmy buffett um you know tropical vibes mm-hmm. and just kind of rolled with it which is that's his thing i lo- and i love that it's like a country dude in the fucking caribbean it's just, mm-hmm. it's just cool to me but um just just like because he's got some songs that are just like fuck like on the coast of somewhere beautiful mm-hmm. um and even Keith Urban has like some songs that I'm like really fuck with. Like uh Memories of Us is probably one of my favorite songs by him. It's probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite songs overall. Interesting. Um but like I cause I went through a country phase for like a year or two. Like two years probably, like mm-hmm. 2011, 2012, when mm-hmm. I first kind of got down here. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Daffy, it took a minute for Daffy to get into it, but like he's into it hardcore now. Cause like there's some good, like if, I'm not really into the bro-, bro country. I don't really give a fuck about any yeah. of that stuff, but there's like some good songs in country music. Yeah, there are. You know, like holy shit. I was listening to, um, I can't remember what song that it was. No, I think it's a, a Whitney Houston song that Dolly Parton sang, that she the one that wrote it. Yeah. Like, um, I think so. Yeah, Dolly Parton's song, yeah, yeah. I'm mean, just like I'm like it. Just there's so much stuff going on in Nashville, and I feel like I don't do it due diligence. I need to like do a little bit more research about like the heavy, like the not even not even so the history, but just like behind the actual music, these songs, like and actual yeah. the people that write them. You know, just because I would have never guessed a million that Dolly Parton wrote that song. Yeah. To me, it's always been like, oh, yeah, it's Whitney Houston song. She recorded it, too. Like, it's on her records, I think, yeah. back in the day. It's just Whitney Houston, you know, wanted to do now a cover that, of it. Yeah. And did it and made it big because it was in that movie. Uh, the Guardian, I think it was called. I don't remember what it was called. Was it in... It, like Kevin Cosner, I think, was in the movie or some shit. I forget. Let me look it up real quick. I think it was even in the Whitney movie, too. I don't know a Whitney movie. Wait. She was starring in the movie. Yeah, she was starring in the movie. I feel like she's... Didn't she sing in that movie, too? She wouldn't have sang it. She was just an actor, I think. No, that's fucking Celine Dion, Dion bro. It's Titanic. But I feel like... that To me, like, I put those two on the same level, man. Like, like Celine Dion, like, for white people, is what Whitney Houston is for black people. There, I said it. <laughs> Fight me, <laughs> Celine Dion is so good. Like I hate that. Like some people just hey, Celine Dion. Oh, no, you do. Uh, I think it's the Bodyguard. Yeah, because like that's the movie she was starring in. Yeah, I think she's in. The, she is in that movie. Yeah, right? that's it is the, Kevin Ka- Cosner. So yeah, that's the movie where like she was starring in. Is Kevin basically Con- the story of her yeah. life in Whitney Houston. Yeah, yeah, she's like in it. No, that's not her story of her life. That's Bodyguard's a, of- a fucking movie. Movie. There is a Whitney movie that's probably a documentary that came out like three years ago. No, that was older. I know, I know, I heard her saying it in a movie where she was in it as well. I don't know. Maybe See, like I don't, video. I don't really. She doesn't do anything for me. Like to me, it's like, like Whitney. I've only heard really the the one or a couple songs that she has, dude. And it's just like everyone was. She, she was a drug addict, dude. <laughs> No, great man. singer and all that, but even fucking Amy Winehouse, fucking OD. Like, yeah, she's a great singer too. Mad people just think like, oh, she's a junkie. No, you no. Know? I don't. I don't think for Whitney. I don't think people think that. I think a lot of people think that. Mm, people not, who just don't are, didn't grow up with her. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like our fucking first introduction to Michael Jackson was, oh, he's a pedophile. You know, kind of mm. stains the fucking you know legend that they are. Yeah, I mean, like, but then I feel like I don't know. Even though it's still around, I, I don't feel like Michael has as much of that connotation around. Again, for the younger generation, yeah. yes. For the older ones that grew up with him, he's a music god. Yeah, you know, still is shit. Still is. The pimp. But you know, like uh, 2012 Sparkle mm-hmm. is probably one you're thinking of. Ah, I can't remember. I have to brush up on my Black History. It's so whatever. And then her, her, her daughter died, too, I think, right? I don't Is that know. that OD as well? I'm not entirely sure. Again, I don't know what the fuck they're going through in their lives. Yeah, it must be hard. And like I said, it's just like never really knowing who's around you and for what reason. So like I said, that's where you got your day ones and try to stick to those. But sometimes your day ones turn, too, because they be expecting shit from you. And just like, motherfucker, you didn't do nothing. I'm out here putting the work. Yeah. Me and Tom and, and Perp were talking about that, like mental health the other day and just not understanding it i spoke like me not really understanding it because what aspect of it like needing medication i guess to get over stuff where to me it's just not knowing who you are and how to 
handle, handle you as an individual, mm. as a person, you know? Because I think the more you learn about yourself, you don't really need to rely on other things. Where I know a lot of people just don't take the time to do that, like I did. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't need anything, like to to help me get through, like anxiety meds or fucking antidepressants or shit to make me go to sleep or whatever. Like, I don't think anyone should need that. You need. Yeah. I understand that we live in a time where it's like stimulus out stimuli everywhere, and like we're always like, you know, fake friends on our social medias and all that, and we never have like alone time or any quiet time to really just learn who we are yeah. and i think the older you get and you still don't know who you are you start losing your shit a little bit and you keep thinking you don't know why mm. and then you just go to a psychiatrist or whatever who fucking tells you oh you got add or something like that and you need meds yeah I, i'm i've also happened I, i've never really been a fan of medicine and that'll happen even like if i have the worst stomach ache i will like try to beat it myself before I take medicine. Um, I don't remember the last time I took meds, dude. The last mm-hmm. time I took ibuprofen was like fucking 2015 after I had surgery on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Like, because I really like when you comparing it to like something Joe Rogan said that always fucking hit me, where like back in the day, whenever you felt stress or anxiety, you know, that was, it's fear. That's all it is. And we either fought whatever was attacking us or we ran away. Mm. Either or we were exerting energy. Mm. We have to. You know, nowadays we don't do that. We just kind of drink or smoke or whatever the fuck it is to try to get over that thing instead of exerting energy, mm. going to the gym, going for a run. That's why I go, f- I do both because it anchors me. It, mm. it's, it brings me back and keeps me like, I went for a two hour, like a, an hour and a half long walk yesterday, you know. Just, just to because it, it tricks your mind into thinking you're kind of moving past whatever it is going on, mm-hmm. um, and that that was also like a neuroscientist or whatever on Tom Billy. You fucking mentioned that too. Like, go for a walk, and like you can even move your eyes left and right, and it tricks your brain into thinking you're moving past whatever the hell it is that's like making you freak out. Mm. But like, go for a fucking run. Yeah, go to the gym. It absolutely you should do. It, it solves like eighty, ninety percent of fucking pr- like problems you think you're having. Yeah, and then after you've done that for like six months, a year, then maybe go talk to somebody. You know, but again, it's like through your twenty. I get it right now. I'm thirty one now, and compared to everyone else in this out there, like in their mid twenties and stuff like that, I was still get like learning who I was too. You know, yeah. you just it's and I understand that, but um. <clears throat> It's just, I think it's just learning yourself first. Yeah. And g- granted, there are people who deal with some shit that mm. I can't even fucking under. I couldn't imagine. Mm. You know, maybe you gotta you gotta do some stuff, whatever. But um, yeah, I think if you exercise and just take the time to learn who you are, block out everything. Like, yeah. Be alone for a couple years. Don't be dating people non fucking stop. You know what I mean? Where just learn who you are first. Mm-hmm. Then you can, you know. I, I just think you'll be fine after that. Yeah, and and I've never really been of the um, you know mindset of you know seeing going to counseling about like every another thing. And you um, go to counseling, go to a psychiatrist and chat a little bit. Yeah. You learn who you are that way too. Yeah, yeah, and th- I, I, that's always been like. Hmm, just I, don't be taking the first thing they prescribe to you. Well, that's the, that's the other thing. I'm I'm not a fan of medicine in general. Like. um like AD, ADHD or ADD, whatever you want to call it, like all those things to me, like if a kid has ADHD, I'm just like, okay, then your kid is just moving a lot. Just get him tired. Just yeah. let him run until he's tired. Yeah, like to like me. Dylan supposedly he had a, I like whatever, Dill. <laughs> um, you, you may have had it. I don't mm-hmm. know, but you seem to be able to focus on some shit when you really need to. See, that's what I'm saying. And even like Courtney had the same thing. She's like, oh, I need to, I need to take medicine for when I go to school. I'm just like, what? It's like, yeah, like I have really bad like anxiety and all that stuff. I'm just like, okay. And I'm like, so you need medicine for that? And she's just like, yeah. I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I'm either. like, I, I, like, I understand. Don't get it. Yeah, I don't think you should have to take anything to fucking make moves in life, especially if you're passionate about something. You know, like, oh, this is my passion. If you need to take Adderall or something to focus on that, go fuck yourself. You're clearly in, are not passionate about it. Uh, I don't know, man. That's the part where to me it's like, I, I don't want. I I agree to the school of thought that you kind of just putting out, but like I also. Try to be like, okay. And it may just be that those people, everybody, like for instance, my pain tolerance Mm. in comparison to your pain tolerance are different. 
you know? No, and that, I, I and, totally and, agree with you. And, everyone deals with things differently, and, and, and everyone's different. And because of that, that's why, like, that angle to me it just makes it like, okay, the tolerance level to me is the determining factor, you yeah. know, depending on, like, what you're also capable of handling, you know? And that's why you have those cases. But then do you have a mentality to where you're abuse of what you're using and you're not trying to go past it? Yeah. Um, and if you're just relying on it solely to make moves or, you know, you never try to do it without it, that's when I have a problem. Yeah. When you're not trying to do it yourself, um, when you feel like, you know, medicine, you know, has to be, you know, in the mix in order for you to move past a hurdle. Just like, to- the, yeah, exactly. If you need to rely on something to, to fix a problem or to do something, you're losing at life. Yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah. I like well, if you if you but I'm also if, ignorant to it. If, I have not researched stay, it. I feel like if you stay if you stay, stay with that train that train of yeah. thought, to me that's when you're losing. Yeah. You got it to me like whatever helps you get through it, that's fine. But if it's something exterior that you feel like then you always need, then you're losing at yeah. that point for me. Dude, I remember like in fourth grade, dude, like I went to, to see a doctor or whatever. I remember I had to stay up all night, so I was sleeping during it and I had like wires in my fucking head and all that stuff and they were like monitoring. I don't even know what the test was about. It may have been an ADD test or whatever, but all I remember is mom smacking me in the back of the head saying, oh, you're just lazy. Yeah. So it's like... That's all I, I. That's all I see it as. Like I also just see it as like you're just not interested in this. You mm-hmm. need to find something you're interested in, and that's fine if you don't know all the way till you're my age. Mm-hmm. You know, you just have to find the thing you're into. Yeah. And I'm also ignorant to like I have not done any research on ADD or ADHD. I've just heard a lot of people say they have it. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like, is that just an excuse? Is that, Are you just saying you have exactly. it so you have something to blame? And that's something we've talked about before. Yeah. Is like no one takes fucking responsibility for goddamn shit. If you mm-hmm. failed, you failed. It's not because of this, mm-hmm. you know. So I mean, and granted, I was in school for a long time, just barely getting by with C pluses and mm-hmm. stuff. I'm garbage at school. I hate math, <laughs> trash at math, and I tried my hardest, dude. I went to fucking summer school, I failed algebra like five times, dude. Garbage at math, and then <laughs> that was when I realized, goddamn, I'm like. Some people are just bad at things, yeah, and yeah. that's fine. You know, Dylan fucking tutored me with it. I was, I went to, I had to take summer courses like three times, Damn. and the teacher even saw it because I'd be there for two hours and then five hours after fucking class, and my teacher still saw me working. And like, he's the one who helped me out. Shout out to, I think his name was Mister Sticks, um, but like, he basically took like one test and another test and kind of took the good things of this one and the good things of this one and put them together to get me that C plus because I can fucking fail it dude he's like because he but he knows he I was putting in the work. work yeah you know and it's I, like it's like me I had the same case scenario like shout out I can't remember her name but like shout out to my math teacher my professor at Belmont that didn't have to work but she was working she said I don't really have to work but I'm only teaching because I can and because I love doing it but my husband makes enough money to do it but I don't really have to do it so to me I'm just like okay I already fuck with this person mm-hmm. like telling me like okay I don't have to work I'm really just doing it just because I'm good at math and I can and I got yeah. a degree but like I would be in tutoring and she's like we did the exact same problem and you nailed it why is it then the test you're not you're not acing I'm just like I don't know it look different yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then like she gave me the point you mm-hmm. know it's just like so like it, it's just like and, and that to me like I think I was talking about this to someone. I'm like, I understand that school is not the sole way to succeed. I agree to that, especially in this day and age society. But I will never deny the importance of school in the yeah. sense that, you know, in terms of being able to socialize, socialize I think is the most important. Socialize with one, but being able to articulate your thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, like be able to explore like on what you think about. It may not be the topic that you want, but yeah. being able to talk about basically anything you should be able to redact like a, a one to two page essay about something that you read and it makes sense. Yeah, I agree with that. That's something I definitely wanted to get better at myself you know, is just you know, communicating and, and articulating my own thoughts yeah. to have a proper discussion with yeah. somebody. Because I've only met like like most people don't know. They're just like, oh, it's whatever. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's not going into detail about what you're you know putting forward and like conversation whatever like dylan is very good at articulating mm-hmm. the colton uh who came over the the writer yeah he's, he's very, very good at articulating yeah. you know they're just educated yeah you know and it's just you have to want to to do that yeah though. it has to be something that you want but like you know that's the part where you know the the whole 
value of school. To me, it used to only be seen as a tool to land a job when really the, I feel like the mission of college is one to, you know, yes, socialize, you know, help you figure out what you want. But most importantly, just give you, you know, the rest of the stuff that you need to kind of just get out there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, as much as it's doing it, the emphasis is kind of put on, oh, what well, is it giving you a job? Because let's face yeah. it, that's the main reason that we go to school. But, you know, school. I wish the a, curriculum was different with me school. Me too. Like they should be teaching you actual life shit. Like teach me taxes. Teach you taxes. Teach you finance. Like, teach come you tax stocks. Seasons, what the fuck do we do? Te- like, yeah. 98. I want to. This is just my number, but like I feel like we're at a good ninety five percent. We're a good ninety five percent of people graduate college and don't have a fucking clue of what they need for taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm even like being on working with Postmates is you know baffles me the amount of people that call in and be like, oh yeah, I need a W two. I'm just like, no, you need a ten ninety nine, and they'll argue with me. No, oh my other job gave me W two. I'm just like, well, all your other jobs jobs that every time you look at your paycheck they take out social security and they Mm -hmm. take out um you know state taxes federal taxes they didn't come taxes and they're just like yeah the deal with postmates i'm just like no sir if you want to look at your pay at your earnings you're getting all that money back and you have to pay that back too Mm -hmm. unless you made less than six hundred dollars and then i'm just like what is that even normal it's like yeah that's pretty normal in the whole united states (laughs) but Don't take my word for it. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, I, I figure like in your younger years into even middle school, you can be taught like the typical stuff yeah. or whatever. But once you get into high school, man, you need to start learning some life shit. Seriously. No one I, gives a fuck about what happened 2,000 years see, ago. Seriously. Though it's good to know our history. It is. But like who, but like who, the older who, you get into junior year, senior year, you got to be learning some shit. Yeah, like to me, like it's important. You know the history, you know the big wars, you know World War One, World War Two, like whatever. All that stuff's important to yeah, know. Yeah, man, some of these kids, man, I see videos. They're like, who the hell is Hitler? Yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, you probably should know so we don't fucking do that again. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's And I feel like that, that's the very sole purpose of history you know like yeah. just to be able to have that to revert back to and to prevent the same thing from happening but like yeah man like when it comes to school like and of course like going back to the whole school loan shit i think i was talking to someone about it and just like man if they forgive it great and i think you know i've said this several times like if they forgive the loan or forgive you know 50 grand or however much yeah it's great not expecting them to no you know so it's just like well see like that. you chose to get into that mm-hmm. maybe you yeah. shouldn't have chose that it's a decision you, know, like, you deal with. It'd be it. fucking dope, but oh, yeah, like I also agree that school should not be nearly as fucking much as they cost. It shouldn't. Like sixty k a year, dude. Like, are like, you out of your fucking mind? Like the fact that you know some people graduate and basically have a loan that's the amount of a mortgage to me is baffling to me. Yeah, and you shouldn't put you just because a person is young and has time to pay it back doesn't mean that they should have that type of financial burden by the time they graduate. Yeah. Dude, school. you can declare bankruptcy and you still have to pay it. Back. Seriously, like, they think you would die and it still has to go to like the yeah next the next beneficiary. Because cool. that's yeah. what I learned. I thought I'm like, oh, if I did, cool. I ain't got to deal with it. No, whatever you got goes to the next person after yeah, and they gotta that, deal with that shit it's like ah, that sucks yeah <laughs> but I think I was <laughs> hey man <friend, Becky. laughs> I remember when I was applying for school they were talking about the school and it's like the only way you can get out of not paying school is if you go to war and die at that point no one has to deal with it I'm just oh, like interesting I'm like if you go to the army or, or you're serving and then something happens there and you can't pay it off then it's forgotten I'm just like hmm yeah. hey me and my buddy were laughing going, shout out to Dre me and him were like laughing our ass and it's like so you're telling me all I gotta do is go to war so I basically can fake my own death and mm-hmm. not have to pay for a school loan. Oh my god, yeah, man, that that was uh, it, it's just crazy, man. Just like all this stuff ongoing right now. I personally like to be to specialize myself because I I really really want to like the Spanish is something that I I, I really want for myself, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm there. It's just like it's not perfect. Like, I'm not fluent by any means. But, like, I feel like in comparison to, like, most Americans, I'm at 80%. Like, drop me in Mexico. Good to go. Like, I'm good to go. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I won't, like, I'll, it'll take me, like, maybe, I don't know, five, ten minutes to get my bearings. But, mm. like, from hearing it, it'll just, like, switch. And I was surprised even when it did when I was down there. Mm. I'm like, didn't realize how much fucking shit I remembered. I'm just like, yo, this means this. And as you hear him say stuff, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, that means this. And then it all makes freaking sense, you know? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, even in English, we sometimes speak in ways that don't make sense. You know, like we say, don't 
and set up doesn't. Yeah, our slang probably fucks up a lot of people. Yeah, but then like to me, like I don't want to look at that as a as a hurdle to me saying I'm not getting better. Yeah, you know, but like overall, you know, like if you make a mistake speaking another language, as long as you're not telling them fuck you instead of hello, you're really good. Mm -hmm. Um, so just knowing that distinction, but yeah, man, it, it's a small process. Eventually, I get the Spanish and start making some coin off of that shit, man. Hell yeah, I don't know. Turn to a Spanish teacher. I keep forgetting that you can make money by learning another language. Yeah, I'll be get back I, on that shit. I don't want to say I'd be okay being a Spanish teacher, but I feel like I would ace the crap out of it. Yeah. I really do. Like, I feel like I would enjoy I love the music. I love the language. Um, and it's a language that, even at school, like, I remember being told, like, oh, yeah, for your oral exam, because, like, I think I, I mentioned, we have, like, a, call it an SAT, whatever, but, like, we have a national exam at uh, sixth grade, ninth grade, and twelfth grade. Sixth grade, you have to pass a national exam in order to, um, no, sorry, in 12th grade. 12th grade, you have to take a national exam in order to go to fucking college. Sorry, high school. It's mixed up back in French and English, so mm. apologize. that's something I, I still struggle with. But like, yeah, so from 12th grade, in order to go to college and whatnot, you have to... Um, no, it's fu it's fucking high school. Cause twelve, no, it's twelfth grade high school here. Sure. Okay, 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 okay. Twelve and under. Okay, well, 12, so nine to twelve is like okay, kind of high school, I guess. CZM might be different over there. Okay, so sixth grade, so that has nothing to do with college yet. But to go to seventh grade, you gotta pass a national exam, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pass it, I think you go back. Mm -hmm. Ninth grade, you can go to tenth grade, and you can take your exam later on, which is what I ended up doing. I take took that shit three times, mm -hmm. and all. First time, I didn't give a shit. Second time, I tried. It wasn't hard enough. Third time was a charm. And then the 12th grade is the last one where it's just like, okay, if you don't pass this, you're taking your 12th grade again, and then you can't go to university or um, college, call it. That's what we call it university. Um, but, yeah, that national exam kicks ass, man. Like, you go out there, and I was told, like, yeah, for your, you know, for Spanish, for um, any language classes, you have to do an oral exam. That's when I started taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, yo, I actually like this. This is pretty cool. And went to Wilmington, North Carolina, volunteered for the Latino Center, Latino community, helped set up, you know, Latino Center, Latino festivals. Like, it's good. Like, I, I, I never had any issues with like any latino people like most genuine piece of people that i've ever met um and the language i think very much so reflects that um so we gonna get i to thought that was interesting because like people in spain are white you know why are they like why is it different here oh i just find that interesting well just i feel like in the last like 20 years we keep making up these names to like for these communities which 20 30 what, latino like Hispanics, you know, the uh, African American, uh, Asian American, like we're just like labeling things, and I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you can still call them what they are, Spanish, but like they belong to a. Well, they're they're either Mexican or Honduran or whatever. It's just yeah, like, it, but like the is, culture needs to be defined. You know, even though like. They're all Spanish-speaking countries, and the way you differ, you make a difference between all of them is like mm -hmm. by the country, and that's what make gives a little bit more definition. But they all come from, I guess, like uh, let's just say nucleus, <laughs> uh, or they all come from the same base, mm -hmm. which is you know Hispanic. And what Hispanic means, like, you know, language speaking of a specific origin, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're in the same region because there's always differences. Mm -hmm. And so, like, to me, Hispanic or Latino, you know, like, englobe Hispanic probably englobes more so that than the Latino. But Latino is also, like, heavily, like, linked to, like, obviously language. So, like, those two go hand in hand. Um, I just find it interesting. Because I think we only really do it here. I don't know if Europe and all those do that. You don't call them, like... Brit African British or something like that. It's just British. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. Spanish. No. It's just Italian. Like here, we always have to have a name for everything. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. like why isn't it just American? You were born here. Yeah, yeah. That, like I've, you, I've by agreed. definition, are African American because yeah. you were born in Africa. But I've if you were born in Nashville, time. Tennessee, the most fucking U.S. of A. city, mm -hmm. it just it's confusing to me. Yeah, no, and then that really kind of just like started. Then again, that conversation I'm just a white me. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck do I know? That really kind of just got that conversation going for me because I was just like, well, yeah, like I am actually african and american you yeah know, like by definition so how does it feel with when like americans here say that 
Um, it feels like okay, where do I belong? <laughs> right? It, it, there's always just a sense of belonging with me. I feel like my, you know, growing up in Africa, I was the American. Yeah. And then I come to the States, I'm the African. You Weird. know what I mean? It's 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 like it's never like one. It's always been like one or the other. I've always struggled with that. Like really? on the personal on some personal shit. I've always struggled with that. I never thought of Africa with you, buddy. You're just Terrence. Well, it, it, you're just well, my buddy. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm still Terrence, but it's just like you know, to other people, I'm like oh, like oh, I grew up in Africa. Oh, okay, okay. And the, but then it, I think I've mentioned this before. Like anyone that meets me is like. Like, I don't know. I try to keep it short and sweet now. When people ask me about, like, I have this, like, generic story that I just give out. Yeah, dude. I don't try to add too much. Dude, to so many people here are fascinated where people are from, I've noticed. Like, when Jack was here, like, everyone's always like, oh, where are you? Oh, London, Auburn. And then they just yeah. keep talking about that, where I feel like people don't, like, people from other countries who have accents don't want to talk about that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they just want to be, like, in the conversation and included and all yeah. that stuff. That's what, like, whenever I met me, like, Somebody from Australia or something like that. I just talk to them. Like, hey, what are you, oh, you're here for school? Cool. What are you here for? Like, because mm-hmm. I don't think they give a fuck. Australia, mate. Australia, France, whatever. Like, if if it's something like really, even then, I don't really say anything. It's just like it's just whatever we're talking about at the moment or whatever that moment is. You know, I don't give a fuck where you're from. It's mm-hmm. like who you are now. You know, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about your past. It's who you are now. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had a. I love being. A, that's why I really love being in, with international students at Belmont. Like, yeah. it it was a way to travel without traveling. You know, you really get to see how our culture is affecting them. Not necessarily in a way that is negative, mm-hmm. but like how it makes them act as a result. Do they adapt to what we've got going on, or, or they learn from it? But like that, that's also the good thing about having an exchange student. They make you look at your culture in a way like, okay, this is very odd. They think this is weird, but to us is normal. Why is this weird? And then you yeah. realize, according to our country, you can't do this X, Y, Z, and the third. You know, so like I've always liked that. Just like these little moments where like you're doing something that completely insignificant, and to somebody else is just like, oh, what? Y'all guys do this, so why? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're all interested, and you end up explaining to people, okay, why? I think that's what I be, would be more interested in, is more on the culture side of yeah, things. Yeah, where, yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck where you're from, but like, why do you think a certain way yeah. compared to this? Like, I remember when I first met Jack, dude, we, like, talked politics for two hours or some mm-hmm. shit. Like, usually you don't do that. Yeah, no. But what was cool is we could both have a conversation mm-hmm. about it. That's, that's what's interesting to me, is when you can still be friends mm-hmm. and have a, a conversation as that could be as divisive as that yeah but i think i think so many people are like so hardcore onto that shit now it's just like dude it's just opinion it's just conversation yeah like nowadays it's like the the identity politics and then like it's becoming people's churches which is dangerous to me mm-hmm. but um yeah it's, it's best when you can just like as we were talking about before articulating mm-hmm. and communicating like properly and and just in ways that can be understood by mm. others, even if they can't articulate it. Yeah. But uh, or even helping someone else articulate what they're trying yeah, to say. Because exactly. if you get the general gist, then you can be like, oh, maybe you know, say it like this mm-hmm. or something, and then you, you can communicate what you're trying to get your point across with somebody else next time. Yeah. You know, teaching and helping people. It's, oh, wow. it's great, man. Like I said, eventually. That's the whole again, the whole language thing, and that that also bogs down with language. You know, like being able to like you know, language is supposed to be the thing that like unifies a country. You know, like and here it's it's different. Like, dude, after craziest thing, I think we chatted about it before was like that Metal Gear Five game I played, Mm -hmm. where like one of the uh, um, things you you can listen to like just voice memos and stuff of Mm -hmm. people talking, and one of them was like. People say, like, the United States is like a melting pot when it's more like a salad bowl. We're all, like, mm. the tomatoes chill with each other and the croutons chill mm. with each other. And we have all these, like, community-based things and nobody integrates. Yeah, yeah. You know, where we can become an actual country an of actual melting people, pot. Yeah. an actual melting pot, yeah. you know? like But people don't do that. You know, they immigrate over here and they yeah. just chill in their own neighborhoods and stuff without... And, and that's where even – that's where fear can come in too. Like yeah. why are they always, always over there? And then like all the people over there are just like, oh, why did they think about us like this? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, well, it's, you're not integrating. You're not learning the language. That's yeah, why yeah. I think it's important. Like if you don't know English and you're living in this country, that's confusing as fuck to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I would say the same if I moved to fucking France or Ivory Coast. 
learn the language, yeah. you know? Why would I go over there and not learn French? And expect people to just speak your language, you know? I mean, I understand, like, you know, it, you, it takes time to integrate, but I understand, like, if you actually have that belief that you're not going to learn a language while living there, yeah, and you're you just going to go... Yeah, here for a reason. Yeah, you, you, know? you, you have to give it at least a proper shot, but we're also not that good at that when we travel to other places. I'll we're, agree with that, but that's traveling. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you're moving to Germany, you probably should learn the fucking oh, yeah. language, bro. Of course, of course. You know, if you're moving to Norway or Mexico or Russia, wherever the fuck you're mm -hmm. going, Middle East, learn the language so you yeah. can communicate. Yeah. You know, that that's that's what I don't know. It's just an opinion of mine, I guess. That's how I've always it just makes it. life fucking easier too. Oh yeah, like like the the power of communication and you know as basic as it sounds and how intertwined it is with languages. That's really. Like what I thought, like you know, that's why I thought international relation was going to be my shit. I'm mm -hmm. just I mean, like, because you can do so much if you understand someone else, and if the big barrier is the fact that you don't speak the same language, then you know, if you think about it, it's as simple as okay, I just got to learn the language, you know, and then like you can solve so many issues that way, you know, because yeah. a lot of time people just are not able to be understood. Yeah, you can understand where they're coming from yeah. if you know the language. You know, because you know, like, like, why is this guy being a dick to me? Oh, it's probably because I don't speak his language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just like... It's, it must be frustrating. Yeah, or even the fact that, you know, he can articulate his thought well enough in English that he has yeah. to say it in Spanish. And if you're able to get... Because, like, there's some things that... Because people can tell you something even though they don't, you know, speak the language, but there's some words that they can't use to qualify how much or low whatever is going on. Yeah. Versus in Spanish or in their native language, if they're explaining something, they're using everything. Mm -hmm. All the, you know... All the, qualifi all the qualifiers, all the articles, they're using everything that they know, and you're able to get a bigger, like, a, get the bigger picture, you know? So it's like, I don't know, man. It's just, like, even when I told Courtney yesterday, I'm just like, oh, yeah, Arabic. I was jacked. And she's like, what? I mean, it's like, yeah, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know, man. Communication, you know, dealing with people, um, all that shit's important, obviously, you know? Don't come to America. I don't want to say don't come to America. You don't want to learn English, but like, don't move to America and say like, I'm not going to learn, because yeah. like, and the whole idea with the whole community like mixing, that's something that a, an exchange student brought up too. She's mm -hmm. like, why do y'all guys have a Black Student Association? And it's like, oh, so we can have a place where we feel like we belong. She's like, but isn't that like a little bit like separative, like separative, like divide, d d divisive? Holy shit! I'm just no like, oh shit! I'm like, I'm like, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I'm like I, I'm like I totally do. I'm just like, but I'm like you gotta look at it from like okay, historically speaking, you know, we were always told to you know be with each other that you couldn't have a you know uh, a white and black had to be you know blacks here, whites here, whatever, and then you kind of break away from that to where it's okay to be in other places, but in some sense and fashion, people make you feel like it's not. Because mm -hmm. it's like, because you you can be, you can have all the good intentions in the world of doing that, but if the world ain't ready for you, then shit, you just suffer. So you just go to what you know or where you know you can be accepted. Well, I like the, how you told me like what your dad had to say about it. Where it's like that's not the real world. You you need to go to a like a I'm not gonna say, it's not normal, but just a school that is integrated. Yeah, like that because if you go to like a historical black college, that's not the world you're it's not the representation how no. can you be you know trained to to navigate to those navigate. Two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying yeah it's just like you know like it, it, it to everything like you want to be in an environment that represents what you're going to deal with now of course you want to be in an environment where you're able to see the likes of you around mm -hmm. you know but like the majority of people, you know, the majority of places, you mostly have white people. So if you 60, 70 percent, yeah, white people in so this it, country. So if you go to a school that's historically black, nothing wrong with that. But you know, yeah. as black people, I don't want to say we act different, we act like normal people, but it's just like there's some things that we do and say that I don't want to say wouldn't necessarily fly around like you know, like a majority like white community, or, but it's just like I don't know, like it's just say like it's different. And so, like, just having those spaces to me, like. It's both divisive, the like you know the black student associations that can be happening in schools, but it's also like bringing things together. Of course, the emphasis needs to be more like okay, even though it says black student association, doesn't mean it's just for black people. Mm. But this is just like okay, it's a space to where like if you want to come, if you're black, or even if you want to just you know be around that. I think it's all about the message and how they promote it mm. because the name itself is already like black student and already just like okay well i don't belong there mm. but then like you know like 
at that point it's just a student association and if you really want to cater to that group of people then i would understand why you would have those institutions yeah but i understand also that it can it can definitely have that divisive um element to it to where people wouldn't feel as welcomed you know it's like, any any i don't care if it's good or bad and if you identify something as different from the rest like i'm not about really yeah. at all like even if it's if it's as good as like a, a historical black community or like a, a racist thing or whatever over here, like it's all it's. I don't like the the divisiveness, like you said, yeah. um, and I don't like pushing it on younger people either. I just saw something about Cartoon Network, like it's good to be anti racist, and there's like these little cartoons. I'm like, yeah, but these are kids; they don't know what that is yet. Mm -hmm. You know, like me and Blow and Dill were talking about like religion and giving them the option of being like a Buddhist or whatever. I'm like, dude, they're five. They don't give a fuck about that yeah. shit. They want to play with their friends, you know? It's like nobody sees that shit until they're told about it, mm. you know, which is, you know, Morgan Freeman even said, like, stop bringing it up. Just let it, like, because all the racist old people, they're all old. 30 years are going to be dead. Everyone under our age, like, if you're a racist under our age, you're not, gonna, you're not going far in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, Again, I still think this country particularly is one of the least racist countries in the world overall. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've traveled the world, bro. I don't know. Like, there's there's some countries that just hate the shit out of other countries, other uh, races and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Like, I just see it like Pharrell, where we're the human race. We're all, like, one people. Mm. You know, it's, you know, easy to identify, like, say, either black or Asian or whatever. Apparently, saying Oriental is bad now. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. Is Blow fucking with me? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I never heard of that. I, I, I like. Mean, I don't even see Oriental as, as an Asian, Asian thing. It's that's it's more so. That's a time to me. Oriental. That's like yeah. the, the the samurai times. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. That's what how, how I kind of see that word and all that stuff. If I can't guess what type of Asian you are, I just go with the blanket statement. Dude, like, Russians yeah. are fucking Asian too. So that's where it, like it confuses me. Indians are Asian. <laughs> you know that's confusing to me. <sighs> yeah, Malaysian. I think for them, it's like. I think they would fall more into the Malaysian. I don't know because Malaysia is Middle a Easterns are fucking Asian. Yeah, like it's just it's confusing to me when we try to identify like all these other things. It's like were you born in China? You're Chinese, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, were you born in India? You're India. Yeah. And I like if y'all want to move here, cool. Learn English. Yeah. You know, I will say it's tough even for like to understand an Indian person speaking English, dude. I was talking to somebody. I'm like, dude, I can't understand what you're saying. You might have to write it down. I mean, and I'm sorry, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I just can't understand over your accent. It's mm -hmm. that thick. I've had those. It's tough to be on the phone call. I get a lot of shit. People are just like, why is Postmate hiring people in the Filipinos? I'm just like, you know, like, is it like, I know a lot of people in America. Literally, people be calling and bitching about this. Yeah. And it's like, why do I have to speak with someone in the Filipino when we have this amount of people in America that need jobs? I'm just like, well, I'm like, let me see. Did I'm they like, apply? I, <laughs> not, not even just that, but it's just like, I'm like, and she's like asking me a question about Postmate. It's like, well, this does in no way reflect how Postmates is thinking or may think this is all my personal opinion. I'm just like, if we're dealing with a pandemic and we're not able to hire as much at the length that we have, if we do have a resource in Philippines mm -hmm. that's available and costs us a fraction of the price, I'm like, as a company, I don't see why I, a person wouldn't go for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she's just, oh, well, you're just being polite and this. I'm just like, but I answered your question logically. You just want to hear what you want to hear. Yes. I can't do nothing about that. <laughs> you know, it's just like, that's the one thing about this job that I am kind of just realizing. I'm just like, okay, it's how you say stuff. Yeah. And like, even though you're saying no or yes, you're just like, put it in the context. And it's like, if you were that company, what would you do? Would you rather spend more money to get American workers that, you know, of course, it might cost more to get. And then you may get, you know, people that speak English, but they may not even want to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm looking at cases. This lady, like in like she emailed us. She's like, I'm not good at troubleshooting. I'm having all these issues. And people just keep hammering down the same shit that the first person sent. No one's trying to think outside the box. Mm. That pisses me off. I fucking called the lady. Turns out she was hacked, not on our end, but like on the back end by mm. somebody that she knew. And so it was causing her some issues. I'm just like, okay, have you tried this? We're trying that. I sat on the phone probably for 40 minutes. I'm just like, cause I'm like, I feel for you. I'm always trying to like, you know, if it's older people and they say, I'm not good with technology, I will help you. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I don't think they should, what I'm feeling, uh, we mentioned this. 
like looking at some of the shit that's out now and feeling out of phase with it, not understanding it. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you can't operate or do anything that you want to do. So like when that lady was like, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. Any of these steps that you're suggesting are not working. And then you reach out for help and there is no help. Yeah. And that on, the, on my end too. I'm like, listen, I've tried this, 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 nothing. How do we get through this? Crickets. Mm-hmm. Fucking crickets. And I'm just like, man, I hate this job even more. Yeah. But yet I'm thinking about a promotion. Oh, really? Different department, yeah. Word. Dealing with the higher-end clientele, which would probably make my life to some degree a little bit easier because you're just white-gloving everything for them. So, like, the conversation probably goes a lot smoother as Mm. in, like, what do you need done? Okay, I'll get that handled for you. Next call. Hi, what do you need? Oh, you want us to add all the information for you because you're a twat and you don't want to do it yourself? Sure, I'll Mm. do it for you. Comes with a pay bump. Nice could be useful so i'm contemplating that but i like the drivers they're fun you know they they say fun stuff and even as much as i don't appreciate them cursing sometimes it's funny some of the shit or like you're on a phone call and this dude just like hey man hold on hey ma what's good with you man hey girl you fine as hell what's <laughs> like shit like that it just makes my freaking night like yeah. it's the only thing about that job that's kind of just like okay it's bearable because i laugh yeah you know but then like you that's awesome that they do like they're post mating right now and they're yeah. still doing their thing yeah like, that's you know cool. what i mean like they don't give a shit yeah. and i love it you know, you deal with like merchants. Like, oh, I'm the merchant. Yeah, we're hard to work at. Yeah, just like or like um, this restaurant called El Pollo Loco, and like the guy that comes like I'm like okay, I'm like not to sound weird, but do you ever have anyone that comes to the store and sings that song from like Coco Un Poco Loco, like or whatever, like whatever? That's what they I think. Is he loses like, shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm just like, does anyone ever come in there and sing that that, that song? You're just like, oh. I wouldn't really know. I'm always at the office. I was like, Arr. put it on me. I'm like, name. Okay, how can I help? <laughs> just like, there's nothing. There's no angle to, to joke with merchants. And mm-hmm. when you get them, though, it's like. It's if they're busy. Yeah, I you mean, know, they're busy. Every time always, I go to a place, they're just like, all right, DoorDash or yeah, 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 Postmates yeah. or Uber or something. And then you got the line of people who are actually trying to dine. There. I know. Oh, by the way, Dylan's birthday's coming up for his 30th. I kind of work. We might be bringing him to. 30th of March? No, he's turning 30. Okay. So his birthday's the twenty, fuck, twentieth or twenty first. <laughs> Shit, <March. laughs> I think it's the twentieth of March. Yeah, we're probably gonna go to. Uh, I found this place called Sushi Train. Yo, you just now discovered Sushi Train. Well, it was closed for like a year because they were rebuilding shit. Yeah, they're by that, that Trader Joe's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, West yeah, Side. Yeah, yeah. I just like I've never been time. to a, a sushi train before. I don't know if Dylan has either, but like he just you know he's into he Japanese freaking, stuff, so it's like it's great. Is it really good? Um, I think. Oh yeah, I've been there. So okay, I went cool. to, even when I was at Belmont, that was my spot. Like okay, I would cool. go there. Um, all you can eat sushi. I think they have a specific time where you pay like one price, mm. and you can eat all the sushi you want. Just make sure you don't eat, pick up the red plates because you have to pay extra for those. Every other plates are fair game, like the yellow, the blue, and the green. So you can then they just keep. How feeding. much is it? Twenty um, bucks or something? No, it was like twelve bucks or something. All the sushi you can Ooh. eat. Like That's usually, lovely. there's a specific time, and if you go for dinner, I think it costs a little bit more. But you can get their hibachi as well. Like, like I said, I it, didn't see a hibachi there. I said it may it might have changed. I used to go there a lot when I was still in college in like 2016, 2017. Yeah, it's right next to the Chipotle there. Yeah, and the Target and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, of course. might be going go there. there. Okay. I don't know if Dylan wants to. Like, I don't know if he's has seen a sushi train before. Okay. I yeah, mean, yeah. he's been to like San Francisco and shit. Maybe he's been there. I don't know. No, do you know it's not an actual train? Yeah. Yeah, I was inside. I saw it like it's it's on a thing and it moves. Yeah, like a like a like a conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Okay, I just didn't know if you expected like an actual train. No, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking idiot! <laughs> I think it's an actual I'm like, train. I need, no mean to break your heart. There. They got There's a little no Christmas choo choos going choo-choo. around with the sushi on top. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I came for the train. <laughs> Damn it! Where's fucking Thomas? Sweet Dana Mary. Sweet Dana Mary. Sweet Dana Mary. Sweet Dana Mary. 